Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother, Advis. And we are here with another episode of What's the Word Wednesday, Season 2, Episode 31. Now, as we usually do, I'm going to go ahead and in the comments, I'm going to put today's topics. While at the same time, I'm also going to go ahead and put our logo in the background as y'all are coming through. Showing yourselves and chilling. But at the same time, when y'all come through, let me know how y'all feeling, how y'all doing, and what's the word. Good to see y'all already up in here. My brother, Buffet Destroyer in the building, man. Peace and love. What's the word? As well as Kundin. Good to see you in here. What's the word, y'all? What's the word? Shout out to y'all. As well as shout out to those who be watching this now or later, whether on Instagram or YouTube. But if you're on YouTube, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe to your boy Avis Speaks. And hit that notification bell for more videos coming because there's going to be more content coming. I got ideas running in my head and they going. As well as we're on the road to a thousand plus. But let's keep that moving and cruising. But appreciate y'all. But as y'all are coming in and doing y'all thing. Please drop in there how y'all doing and how y'all feeling and what's the word as well as just letting me know if there's any news or any things that y'all have in mind. So please appreciate y'all. This show goes on because of y'all. So while while I see that going on in here for today's episode, topics we're going to be getting into and looking at, we got going into our current events as we usually do. Then second, we're going to be talking about the laws of nature. And I'll go specifically which laws that we're going to be talking about. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about how to build a firm foundation. And it's going to be based off of what we're talking about. I'm not going to say specifically what, but you'll find out. But yes, Let's um, go ahead and see what y'all got going on already with the comments before we get the show going with the show song and everything. But all right, let's see. Happy. So happy dad. I'm not going to even say the rest is our, our Burmese festival of life to celebrate the Buddha coming back to earth after visiting his reincarnated mom in a different realm. Well, happy to that um, Burmese festival right back at you. Right back at you. Let me see. Right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna read this next comment, then we're gonna be starting the show. Said, don't I downloaded last week's YouTube upload because I want to upload some cool highlights to IGTV. We said some good stuff. He talking about the show from our show. From I mean the last what's the word Wednesday or what you um did with your workshop. Let me know specifically which one it is. But always more than welcome to always appreciate you coming on and sharing. Again, this is what makes the show the show is people coming in and sharing their thoughts and perspectives and adding on and building. All right. But with that, let's go ahead and get the show song on and we are going to push forward with the show. Got you. If you don't know, just learn. You'll sing along soon. And we tell them like, what's the word, y'all? What's the word? What's the word, y'all? What's the word? What's the word, y'all? What's the word? We tell them like, what's the word? What's the word? What you heard? We gotta know, yeah, what's the word? Once again, y'all, this is your brother Avis, and we are here with another episode of What's the Word Wednesday, season two, episode 31. My goodness. And with that, again, appreciate y'all's time, y'all's support coming in and giving of yourselves and adding to the conversation that we have every Wednesday, day in and Wednesday out. But with that, as y'all coming through, let me know how y'all feeling, how y'all doing, and what's the word, especially, please. Gotta know what's going on. Um, But with that, 
for today's episode. Again, we're going to be talking about current events. We're going to get into the laws of nature. And we'll talk about specifically which ones I want to speak on. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to build a firm foundation. And that will be the show. But with that, okay, it was what's the, okay, for sure, bro. All right. For sure, Coonan, you're good, you're good. But with that, let's go ahead and let's get updated on some news. And once again, if y'all have any news reports, anything that y'all would like to share for this news section, please throw them in the comments as we usually do. Share what is in the comments. And if there's anything that can be shared to everyone to know, please throw them in there. All right. So first half of the stuff of the news, just giving y'all some more updates on shots, pandemic, etc. And then a few articles um, touching on um, or one article touching on mental health, um, a few talking about just overall um, climate change and health. And then one I wanted to talk about when it comes to um, a very notable person when it comes to cell research, which is the late Henny, Henrietta Lacks. So there's an article on her as well. But that's what I got for the news. So let's start off with the first article. And the first article we got comes from MSN, specifically at Redders, if I'm saying it right, or Redders. And the article title reads, Novavax tumbles after political report on COVID-19 vaccine production delay. So for, for those back way when, we already know that there's been a multitude are a few different types of vaccines that have came out as well as were in production. Of course, we have the Pfizer, have Moderna, we have the Johnson & Johnson, we had AstraZeneca, but they took that off of the shelf. And then they also were starting to use and not use, but develop another one, which was called Novavax. And this is what's going on um, with this particular one, Novavax. If you haven't heard yet, it's another one. But what's going on is as they were doing clinical trials, some clinical trials were showing that it was below um, the 50% threshold range for effectiveness. So that basically means that if something like that does not meet that threshold, then it is not viable to use. So they're having issues. From what I'm seeing here is the stock is um, plummeting. And for those who are in the stock game, y'all know that you it's a publicly traded stock. So all of these are. So Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, these are all publicly traded. So you can get in on this stuff if you want to make money off of things of this nature. But it's because of the production delays that the stock has been dropping. But let's see what's going on. Two paragraphs and we're out. Article reads, shares of Novavax Incorporated fell 20% after a report from political said that the company's faces significant hurdles in proving it can manufacture its experimental COVID-19 vaccine that meets regulators' quality standards, resulting in production delays. The method Novavax uses are used to test the purity of the vaccine has fallen short of the U.S. regulator standards, citing people familiar with the matter. Novavax in a statement said that it was confident in its ability to deliver its high quality vaccine. We underscore our ongoing commitment to the stringent standards of the production and manufacturing of our recumbent nanoparticle protein based COVID-19 vaccine candidate with Matrix M adjuvant adjuvant the company said the company said it had filed for regulatory authorization for a shot in India, Indonesia and the Philippines and reiterated that it expects to file for emergency use authorization in the United States before the end of 2021. Honestly, actually, that was the whole article. It was very short for those two paragraphs. But yeah, the interesting thing I did not know about this one, Novavax, is it looks like it is not a, um, a, MNR, a mRNA spike protein. 
This one is actually a recumbent nano particle protein based one. So this is a different technology to be used in this particular vaccine, but it is showing that it is dropping when it comes to the cells, their production delays, as well as meeting the standards. So I just wanted to share that with y'all because the, the vaccine game right now is is all over the place with all these multitude of different vaccines and the idea when it comes to boosters and mixing, which we'll get into later. But that is this article. Again, MSN, specifically Redders, an article title is Novavax tumbles after political report on COVID-19 vaccine production delays or delay. Right. Before I get to the next one, let me check these comments going in in the comments. Okay, in local news, someone's cousin in Santa Ana faced an extrajudicial execution by Comps last month. So there's a protest this Saturday. Wow. Uh. Wow. Man, unfortunate of the circumstances and sending love to, of course, and condolences to the family. It, there's there's so much going on, but again, appreciate you sharing that. Then we have Senate Republicans again blocked a bill that will make election day a holiday. Yeah, I saw that too. I I didn't I didn't feel like literally color, covering that because it seems like it's a back and forth thing again. But I did see that. Um, did FDMA authorize the booster shots from Moderna's and Johnson & Johnson? How about Pfizer? About to find out right now. At least from this article I have, I haven't, I haven't read just yet. But we're about to actually find out, so I got you. So, before we even get to those booster shots, the next article I got comes from CNN. Under coronavirus fact versus fiction. With Dr. Um, Sanjay um, Gupta, which for those two who don't know who Sanjay Gupta is, is another um, person that's under um, CNN when it comes to their, one of their spokesfolks. And actually went on to a, um, Joe Rogan's um, podcast and had a whole situation with that, too, where he got they got grilled on how they misrepresented Joe Rogan. In his comments in the media, so that. But this, there's more a uh, background. You can look this person up. But the article title reads: "A new Delta descendant is rising in the UK." Here's what to know. So, I also have been seeing that there's also been um, re-emerging spikes all across Europe, and they're preparing for uh, just that extra that another wave of the coronavirus going on so i haven't got to get more details into it but in the uk we'll see what's going on with this two paragraphs and we're out article reads british and international authorities are closely monitoring a subtype so a subtype of the delta variant that is causing a growing number of infections in the united kingdom the descendant of the variant known as AY.4.2 accounted for an estimate of 6% of cases in the week of September 27th, the last week with complete sequencing data, and is on an increasing trajectory. So, let's see. A report by the UK Health Security Agency said, Little is known about AY.4.2 point. Some experts experts have suggested it could be a slightly more transmissible. It could be slightly more transmissible than the original Delta variant, though it has not yet been confirmed. While it accounts for a growing number of infections, it is not yet classified in the UK as a variant of concern, which I'm also going to update y'all on that. It currently remains rare beyond Britain, with a small number of cases being recorded in Denmark and the US. Expert 
Francisco's Bollocks. I'm terrible at names, but y'all bear with me. Told the Science Media Center on Tuesday. So there's more about this. Um, I'm surprised that right now it doesn't. Again, it is not in an increasing alarm because it doesn't even have a particular name yet. Besides, it's cult. That I mean, doesn't have a code name. I should say it's it's name is AY point four point two, but like again, it's not gotten a Greek alphabet code name given to it yet. But there looks like there is, and it says descendant, so something that is basically another mutation from Delta, so like another um, instance of Delta, but slightly more transmissible, but they still have not confirmed it, which makes me start to think about back in India, there was a, almost you could say quote unquote descendant of Delta named Delta Plus, but Delta Plus wasn't as transmissible or as deadly as the Delta virus itself. But it was uh, another break off mutation. But we haven't heard any more about that. So I don't know if this is also another variant of a subtype of Delta. But they'll see more as if more of this transmissibility and more cases rises with this particular one. But that's what's going on in the UK. Again. This article comes from CNN under coronavirus factor fiction and the headline name title is a new Delta descendant is rising in the UK. Here's what to know. But that is that article. If you all have any more thoughts on that, too, please throw them in there while I'm looking through and finding more things to update y'all on when it comes to all these different variants, which switching to that. I wanted to quickly, before we jump to the next article, let y'all know what um, variants from the coronavirus so far have been noted. And so we can just have an updated list, okay, of all the variants that are out there or to be watched or will be called variants of concern. So right now, there's different sub categories. One being variant being monitored, another one being variant of interest, another one being variant of concern, which is the issue, and then variant of high consequence. I'm not even too sure of what high consequence, well, I think high consequence, consequences, actions, doesn't turn out well. But on this, I just want to talk about and should tell you all the different ones. So what we got under the variant being monitored is a whole list of the ones everything else besides variant of concern that has one under it but all the other um subtitles only it doesn't have anything in there but the variants being monitored we got the alpha variant so the original um virus um which was um named b.1.1.7 that's its name then we have the beta which was the B1, the B.1.351. Then we have Gamma P.1. Then we have Epsilon, which I barely knew about. Um, I'm not going to keep doing all the numbers. Then we have ETA, the ETA, the ETA. Then we have the um, Alota or Lota or Iota is Iota. Then we have the Kappa. Then we have one that's just a number. Then we have the Mu variant, which I've spoken about before. And then we have the Zeta variant. And all of these ones have gone under variant being monitored. So they're still being closely watched. Usually what happens is they'll go from being in monitoring if it starts to increase. And then it turns into a variant of interest, which we have none right now. And then it goes into a variant of concern. And then lastly, it goes into a variant of high concern. So there's a number of setups of what happens with that. But there's only all of these variants are being monitored. The next one we have is a variant of concern, which right now is the Delta variant. That's the main one of concern right now. Um, It's number and now it's caught in the AY lineages. So what I was speaking about earlier with the UK having a new Delta descendant, 
It's that AY um, lineage there. So that's what's a concern. What's going on, Shinobi? Peace and love, man. Welcome. Welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays, my G. Welcome. So let me know how you feeling, what you're doing, and what's the word. I'm just doing a new section right now so we get caught up. But then later on, we got more um, topics and things to talk about. So appreciate you coming through. But that's the list right now of all the different um, coronavirus variants. Majority, all of them besides one, are all still being monitored. There's no variants of interest right now. And the only variant concern that we have is just the Delta. And you wonder, okay, where you get all this information? CDC. You can go look up the CDC and put in SARS-CoV-2 variant classifications and definition. And you can find all of those variants. So you can know what's going on. But... With that, y'all, let's get to the next article. Now, this article comes from CNN Health. And the headline reads, FDA authorizes booster doses of Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Says mix and match. Okay. So, earlier I was talking about all the different at least vaccines that they have on the market right now. And last Wednesday, we talked about how they're doing trials with the mix and match. And they were noticing that there is more effectiveness, especially with the um, booster shots of those folks who had got the Johnson and Johnson, that they would get a booster shot from um, Moderna. Or if they got a booster shot from Pfizer, it was more effective than getting another um, booster of Johnson and Johnson, which was some clinical trials but we'll see what they say because now it has been um have been authorized so let's see what's going on two paragraphs and we're out article reads the f the yeah the u.s fda authorized booster doses of covid19 vaccines made by moderna and johnson and johnson wednesday and also said which is today and also said any of the three authorized vaccines could be used as a booster in a mix and match approach. But it left in place a complex formula for, yeah, for who should get the booster shots and when, with officials saying that they may simplify the framework as more safety data comes in. Now, vaccine advisors to the U.S. Centers of Disease Control, CDC, will consider the FDA's authorization and offer their own advice. If CDC Director Dr. Michelle um, Walensky signs off, people could start getting Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's boosters within the days. The FDA gave emergency use authorization for a half dose of Moderna's vaccine as a booster for people fully vaccinated at least six months ago who are, are also at least 65 years old or who are at least 18 and at high risk <coughs> of severe COVID-19 or have frequent institutional or occupational exposure to the virus. So while I go ahead and get a sip of that, Y'all think about that. So, I'm not going to continue on. Like I said, two paragraphs and we're out. So, from this article, they basically gave the okay, but the CDC is still giving their own recommendations, even though it has been okayed by the FDA. Again, a lot of this stuff is under emergency use authorization. So basically, they still are doing trials and clinical trials of these things. So it is still considered experimental. But what they're doing is they're giving you half doses. And for those who qualify age 65, um, who are at least 18 and has a high risk of severe um, COVID-19, or if you work in places that you're exposed to COVID-19, the virus, um, as well as if you have, and they spoke about it too, if you have what we call comorbidities or immune compromise. So if you have multiple other different, um, I'll just say like this, hereditary um, diseases, infections, etc., um, it will be authorized 
for you to take it. But again, I'm just showing the news, Instagram, YouTube. This is from an article from CNN. And the title is FDA authorizes booster doses of Moderna and Johnson and Johnson vaccines says mix and match. Okay, I'm saying anything else to that effect, but just know, just do your research or at least look things up so you know what's going on. Make sure you really think about it when it comes to the choices and things that you take. If it makes sense for you to do it, go for it. If it doesn't. Do a little bit more of digging to figure out what will be the best possible options for you. But all of that set aside, always make sure that you're keeping yourself healthy, that you're practicing, you know, proper hygiene. You're practicing proper, you know, health, whether if it's eating, making sure you go out and exercise. All of those different things is the overall well-being. Practice that and keep that up in order so that you not only keep yourself healthy, but then also those around you. But again... That was the article. We're moving on to anything else. If y'all have any news, please throw it in the comments. I would like to um, hear from y'all as well when it comes to that. Now, next thing. This one I wanted to at least like touch on real loosely because of what's going on with the mandates and etc. But this article comes from NPR and the headline from this article reads, Organizing Online. COVID skeptics drive public health professionals from their jobs. Very interesting. Again, I'm going to give about two paragraphs and then we are out and give a little my spill on it. All right. Article reads, when Nick Lawyer, a physician assistant in Sanders County, Montana, was asked by local leaders to take on the voluntary position of county public health officer, it felt like the right thing to do to serve his community in a crisis. I think it was one of the few, I think I was one of the few who expressed any interest in a position who had any reasonable qualifications for the job, lawyer says. Lawyer has worked with a PA at the 14 bed Clark Fork Valley Hospital in Plains, a town of about a thousand people. In a re- relatively remote river cut basin in northwest Montana since 2013. When he agreed to take on extra duties, he decided to also begin a master's program in public health at the University of Montana to further boost his qualifications. Little did he know the qualifications would soon become a mark on him in the eyes of some local activists. Last one. Starting last winter, when the COVID-19 vaccines were rolled out, lawyer found himself in the crosshairs of what he calls a small yet vocal group of extremists. He was surprised because by the Montana's far right governor, Greg, and I'm not going to even try um, uh, Forte's the last part of the name, had already overturned the state's mass mandate and the state's Republican controlled legislature had passed the only law in the nation banning private businesses from requiring their employees to get vaccinated. Now, I'm not going to get into more of the article, but the whole the whole idea of just what the title reads itself, which again this is from NPR. The title is Organizing Online COVID Skeptics Drive Public Health Professionals from Their Jobs. And I wanted to speak on this real quick. Because of the the whole realm of how the pandemic is being not only drawn out, but is being covered. And what I mean by covered is how people are going about sharing the news on it. And it is creating more and more, at least in my eyes and perspective, what I'm seeing, more division. And what ends up happening is folks that really want to help and really want to do their part and do their justice end up getting burnt out and feeling like they're being targeted to the point they end up leaving. So then we have less experts within a field. But then at the same time, we also have um, these mandates that are also pressuring those same experts who still have 
and want to have that autonomy for themselves, which ends up leaving, again, more people, more experts out of the field, which we have already an issue with um, a lack of employment just across the board. There's uh, so many places I've been at and seen that they are just low on staff wherever they are. And it's just the way that this has been rolled out and it has been broadcasted to people. It hasn't been well received on either side because again to me what i've seen is caused too much division but i just wanted to quickly talk on that you know um instagram youtube again this is from the article i'm giving off of there from the article this is perspectives from there All right next one we got a few more and then we are um done and we'll go into the next portion of the show All right next article comes from NPR again, and this is in Children's Health. Headline reads, Pediatricians say that the mental health crisis amongst children has become a national emergency. Hmm. Again, two paragraphs and we're out. Article reads, A coalition of the nation's leading experts in pediatric health has issued an urgent warning, declaring that the mental health crisis amongst children is so dire that it has become a national emergency. The declaration was penned by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Children's Hospital Association, and the American Academy of Children and Adolescent um, Psychiatry, which together represents more than 77,000 physicians and 200 children's hospitals. In the letter released Tuesday, the group says that the rates of childhood mental health concerns were already steadily going up or rising up the past decade. But the coronavirus pandemic, as well as the issue of race inequality, they wrote, has exacerbated the challenges. I'll read um, some of the numbers and then we'll stop from there. Um, When it comes to. Offing yourself, in particular, the groups point to data showing that by 2018, offing yourself was the second leading cause of death for people between the ages of 10 and 24. Some more numbers. Teenage girls have emerged particularly at risk as well from February to March of this year. Emergency departments visits for suspected offing yourself attempts were up 51% for girls ages 12 to 17, compared with the same period in 2019, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Last ones. Overall, the data shows that in 2020, the percentage of emergency department visits for mental health emergencies rose by 24%. For children between the ages of 5 and 11 and 31 percent for those between 12 to 17 comparing with 2019 so yes there's more numbers and there's more a little bit more to this article but again i wanted to to share this too because right now there is the talk about you know children also their fda trying to authorize the use of the vaccine for children between 5 and 11 but during that time especially during our lockdowns for children to be able to go outside and do certain things i knew it would have some type of impact and effect and we are seeing that now through the data and again this article comes from npr headline of it pediatricians say that the mental health crisis among children has become a national emergency but yeah yeah if y'all have any please throw it in the comments y'all have any thoughts concerns on that as well too um next thing in news um that i just wanted to slowly touch on um which is this new this other article and i'm only gonna just i'm gonna skip to a certain part that just wanted to read from it i'll do like the first half of it but this article comes from npr again and this one headline reads what colin powell's death can and can't tell us about the COVID breakthrough cases. So for those who don't know, um, Colin Powell was one of the first um, U.S. I 
forget specifically um, what he was representing in those particular cases. Um, but he just recently passed away and he was fully vaccinated and was also uh, fighting another um, rare disease that he had. But what the main big thing is the talking about of what a COVID um, breakthrough case is. So that is when someone who is fully vaccinated ends up still getting the virus itself. And that's what they call a breakthrough case. So I just wanted to quickly touch on the least quick of the numbers as well as um, his certain situation. So I'm just going to read two of those paragraphs and we'll be out. Now, in Colin Powell's case, of course, there are several reasons on why he was at high risk. He was 84 and he had been treated in recent years for multiple uh, myeloma. Uh, yeah, myeloma, I think it is. A blood cancer that forms in the plasma cells, which are critical for the immune system. These facts alone will put him at a very high risk for a breakthrough illness, says Dr. Rachel Bender, Ignacio who directs COVID-19 clinical research at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this part right here where it had a percentage, and then I leave it at that. Even with the concerns about the possibility of waning protection from the vaccine, scientists say the best data in the U.S. still tells a clear story. People who are fully vaccinated have a far lower risk of getting infected or dying from COVID-19 than the unvaccinated. According to the data that represents about 30% of the U.S. population from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. So the numbers is still justifying um, the rates when it comes to vaccinated and unvaccinated and hospitalizations and deaths. So I just wanted to touch on that quickly is that they are saying that um, breakthroughs were originally back way when were very rare. But now, as we're seeing, we're starting to notice that these breakthrough cases are starting to um, form a little bit more, even though you can still be protected, even with the waning effectiveness of the vaccine. But I just wanted to touch on that real quick, but. That's that for this article. So we'll move to the next one. And we're almost done. We got two more left. But shots out. I see you in here, brother. West Coast Ninja in the building. Peace and love, brother. What's the word? What's the word? You're doing the news right now. I'm almost done. And then we'll move on to the next stuff. But this next article comes from NPR again. And this is in the climate section. Article title reads, climate change is bad for your health. And it plans and plans to boost economies may make it worse. So we'll see. What are they talking about? We'll do a little bit again, two paragraphs and we're out. So article reads, it may seem obvious. Heat kills. Wildfire burns. Flooding drowns. But the spiraling health effects of a rapidly warming world has also been subtle heat sparks violence and disrupts sleep wildfire smoke can, can trigger respiratory events thousands of miles away floating can increase the rates of offing yourself and mental health problems warmer winters expand the range of disease carrying mosquitoes and ticks a new report from the medical journal the lancet finds that human-caused climate change is worsening human health in just about every measurable way, and the world leaders are missing an opportunity to address it. Trillions of dollars are being spent worldwide to help economies recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, but less than one in five of those dollars are expected to reduce climate warming greenhouse gases emissions in fact the overall impact of those recovery plans is likely to be negative for the world's climate says marina Rome romelano romanello yeah i'm just gonna leave it at that again i'm terrible with names so y'all bear with me the lead author of the annual report 
We are recovering from a health crisis in a way that's putting our health at risk, she says. Climate-fueled extreme weather is killing people across the U.S. and around the globe. Again, we have the floodings, we have the wildfires, and we also have the disaster reliefs, um, which is causing billions in um, dollars. But I'm not going to go any more further into this article, but... The main idea from the article, again, it's from NPR, and the title reads, Climate change is bad for your health, and plans to boost economies may make it worse. So, all of the man-made things that is going on right now that we're doing to destroy the climate, destroy our natural habitat, making things so unnatural, we are also causing a negative impact and an effect on things. So, not only from the air, but also from just... All the unknown weather changes and seasons for folks. I know for myself, living here in Cali, that I don't. I is sometimes you can you can know we have the four different seasons, but it just feels like you get you get a dose of every one of those seasons, every season, but like in little short stints. So that throws off the again the balance and the equilibrium of the climate in the world. That some things become odd and weird so that it really does have an effect and changes on you. Especially since around in Cali, there's usually a lot of wildfires. Like further, further out, out almost up north going in between um, Northern California, almost up into Oregon and around in those areas. And that does ultimately have an effect on um, the air. Not already that we have... Um, chemtrails you know we have airplanes we have those um emissions from cars etc so we're adding on on top of just not only respiratory health i know there's been studies that have been done by folks especially who live near um not only um oil like oil places that literally factories oil factories but also that live by the freeway their their um respiratory system or when it comes to the quality of the air that they get it, it has a um, almost a permanent effect on their body and their health. So a lot of these environmental changes and things that we're doing, and even especially if you're trying to boost an economy and get things really going, it can just exacerbate things even further. So we have to really take a look at this. I know the focus right now is still the pandemic, the virus, etc., all the different variants, things that's happening. But it feels like we're trying to juggle multiple things, but we're dropping the ball in so many different areas. Like I talked about last Wednesday, there is a whole oil spill that happened over here close over in Huntington Beach, Long Beach, almost that around that area. So they're trying to fix that here, at least in California, as well as we're starting to have certain food shortages because there are ships out waiting and they cannot be docked or sent because then there's also not enough um, truckers to get the foods and send them out to places as well as there's a long wait to get a lot of these things unloaded etc so we have so many things that are being backed up that is just to a point where yo it's, it's it's like when we talk about when you talk about a situation in your mind if you're doing a presentation or if you're going anywhere and you're like as long as it doesn't become a you know a, a garbage um dumpster on um, fire like we're gonna be good Right now, it feels like this stuff is starting to turn into a garbage dumpster fire from all of the things that are coming together from various places. But yeah, I'm going to stop with that article and let us move on to the last one for tonight. And I wanted to get through this one because this one I felt was at least very important for those folks who do not know about who Henrietta Lacks is. I wanted to read through this. But this article comes from CNN and the headline reads, the world health organization i did it this time i didn't mess up so the who honors the late henrietta Lacks for her contributions to scientific research so i'm gonna read through it so then you'll find out okay who is henrietta Lacks. got y'all article reads the who on wednesday honored the late henrietta Lacks, whose cells have been used for innovative scientific research for decades with an award in recognition for her contributions to the advancement of medical medicine. Lax, a black woman, was suffering from cer um, cervical cancer when she was being treated at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in 1951. A surgeon removed cells from her cervix without her consent, keyword, without her consent, and you'll see later in the article, 
during a procedure and that sample enabled a doctor at the hospital to create the first human cell line to reproduce outside of the body. So this is how we're able to test and do different things too on different cells. It's because of also Henrietta Lacks. But we'll continue. The cell line now known as the, the HeLa cells allowed scientists to experiment and create life-saving medicine including the polio vaccine, in vitro fertilization, and gene mapping as well as help advance cancer and AIDS research. Lax, 31, who died that same year from cancer, but her influence on the medical field lived on, leading the Who Directors General's Award, so got an award. In honorary Henrietta Lacks, who acknowledges the importance of recognizing the past scientific injustices, advancing and advancing racial equity in health and science, Director General Dr. Tedros um, at Haman, and I'm not going to even try the last name, it's terrible, said in a statement, it's also an, an opportunity to recognize women, particularly women of color, who have made incredible but often unseen contributions to medical science. Several of Lack's grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and other family members attended the war ceremony at, at the WHO office in Geneva. Her 87-year-old son, Lawrence Lack Sr., accepted the award on her behalf. We have moved to receive this. We are moved to receive this here historic recognition, recognition of my mother, Henrietta Lacks, honoring who she was as a remarkable woman and the lasting impact of her HeLa cells. My mother's contributions, once hidden, are now being rightfully honored for their global impact, Lawrence Lack said in a statement. My mother was a pioneer in life, giving back to her community, helping others live a better life and caring for others, he added. In death, she continued to help the world. Her legacy lives on in us, and we thank you for saying her name, Henrietta Lacks. Now, the part that I wanted to get to on here, which we were talking about earlier, and I see your comment in there, Kundi, and it said, had died, and he was, um, despite being fully vaccinated, he was old. Yes, I already spoke on it. You had left, and you just came back. I already went through that news with him, and I already already broke that down a bit, so we, I did get to talk about that. Um, but let me finish this last part here on Henrietta Lacks. So you heard about in the first part how um, a doctor, without her consent, took some of some the cell tissues from her cervix and started to use that to, you know, make all these innovative changes and help with um, solving different types of, you know, diseases and things of that nature. Now, the family sues biotechnical company for non-consensual use of the cells because for years people did not know about who Henrietta Lacks was and they kept this under the wraps. And they were making profits and things off of this without any recognition until now. But I just want to read this last part. We'll be done with the news and we'll move on to the topics. But here we go. At the time of lax procedure, taking cells from people without their consent wasn't against protocols. Interesting. Later this month, Lax family filed a lawsuit against Thermo Fisher Scientific and Corporation for unjust enrichment from the non-consensual use and profiting from her tissue sample and cell line. The lawsuit alleges that Thermo Fisher Scientific is knowingly profiting from the unlawful conduct of the John Hopkins doctors and that it's ill-gotten gains rightfully belong to um, Miss Lacks' estate. It argues that the company is making a conscious choice to sell and mass produce the living tissues of Henrietta Lacks, a black woman, grandmother, and community leader, despite the corporation's knowledge that Miss Lacks' tissue was taken from her without her consent by doctors at the John Hopkins Hospital in a racially unjust medical system. Look up medical apartheid i forgot the art i mean the the author but medical apartheid and you'll know while the origin of the hela cells was not clear for years lack story was becoming widely known in the 21st century 
It was the subject of the best-selling book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which was published in 2010 in a subsequent movie of the same na name starring Oprah Winfrey. The U.S. House of Representatives has recognized her non consensual contribution to cancer research, and John Hopkins holds a annual lecture series on her impact on medicine. The lawsuit claims that with this wide recognition, there is no way that Thermo Fisher Scientific could say that it didn't know the history behind, behind its products containing HeLa cells and points to a page on the company's website that acknowledges the cells were taken without Lax's con consent. According to the lawsuit, there are at least 12 products marked by Thermo Fisher that include the HeLa cell line. Thermo Fisher generates annual revenue of approximately $35 billion, according to its website. CNN has reached out to the company for comment, but I don't know. They got the comments. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that for at least a lot of folks who are starting to come in to know who Henry Relax is and about, you know, how messed up history can be. And I mean, we could go back to patents. I have like certain folks who had patents back way back when and then it was stolen and repatent. There's another different things, but this being... Um, when it comes to sales within the body. So I just really wanted to share this because I, I mean, I learned about Henrietta Lacks probably about, I want to say about 12 years or so ago, but I haven't got into so many full depths, but I know I've learned much more about her as time commenced. But I thought it was very important to talk about this because without her sales, we wouldn't have a lot more of this research for polio, you know, in vitro gene mapping, as well as advances in um, cancer and AIDS. So please shout out to Henrietta Lacks and their family and everyone but with that y'all that's all the news i have for tonight if y'all have anything else please throw them in the comments and if you anything you want to share please i appreciate it and i'm grateful for y'all's time coming in and listening because it's not always the um funnest part to hear about the news but somebody got to do it at times all right y'all um let me get up in here in the comments real quick before we move on to the next topic Oh, yeah, they made billions without the family's consent. Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, update for you, Kundin. Um, they did. The FDA authorized um, the boosters for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, just those two. We haven't heard much from Pfizer, but just from those two, because I know you left but came back, but I read that article already, and they, they did. Uh, but, yeah. Now... Moving to the next topic, y'all. Next topic that we're going to be talking about is the laws of nature. Now, if y'all have an idea what a law of nature is, throw it in the comments. If not, you're wondering to yourself, okay, what do you talk about when you mean um, the laws of nature? Like, which ones are you talking about? Are you talking about the elements? Are you talking about universal laws? Are you talking about human nature laws? Like, which laws are you talking about? Are you talking about the laws in Congress? Which type of laws are you talking about? Well, before I say which type of laws I'm talking about, let me at least give you at least a brief definition of at least a law of nature. And this, again, comes from Webster's, and then we can build on from there. So... From Webster's Dictionary on Law of Nature. Definition one says a natural instinct or a natural relation of human beings or animals due to native character or condition. So it's something that is already innately within us or in animals in our condition on this world or in this world is what a law of nature is we abide by it there is no oh it's a theory no it is something that it has been set in stone and is not going to be changed it cannot be changed you can try to manipulate it as much as you want but at the end of the day i have a i have i know a saying i see it multiple times i have a shirt that has it i should have worn it nature always wins there's so much of a natural balance, and when you mess with nature to put back that equilibrium and that balance, there's always going to be some type of reaction to it, which one of the laws is cause and effect. 
But before I do that, the next one is a generalized statement of natural processes. So something that is naturally processed out and things of that nature. All right. I'm not going to read too much in particular, any other ones on here, but those are the two when it comes to a law of nature. Now, I see in a comment, you say, oh, OK, so what are the laws of nature like from physics, laws of conservation and thermodynamics? See, exactly. So in this particular case, the laws that I wanted to speak on, they go by they go by different. There's so many different names and categories to put them in but i'm speaking on more so universal laws there's also another heading that they call it the hermetic principles which is principles is a a word that's very similar to and can be interchanged with law because when you have a principle it's a law so this these hermetic principles are laws which is seven of them but there's also other places that say that there's 12, there's 13. But in this particular case, I wanted to just talk about the seven hermetic principles, which are going to be laws of nature. So just things that have an ultimate effect on us that we have different words for them and different phrases for them. in in English. And we use them every day without really knowing what it is. But I'm going to get a little specific into um, what they are. I may not. Again, we're not going to go through every single one and be like, oh, yeah, we're going to talk every single one. I'm going to tell you which each one of them are and we'll briefly, briefly talk about them. But then I really want to talk about how these laws of nature have an impact on on our overall being and our day to day living in our lives while I'm over here knocking my fan over. Because <laughs> my computer be getting hot man my laptop is is almost fried y'all it's almost done but let's see so let's see so it's that the seven hermetic principles those are more like metaphysics so i'm talking universal principles so you want to say metaphysics but i'm just saying just the universal principles that that speak on because that can go into that whole idea you know the different planes and things of that nature but it speaks to what and how, honestly, our day-to-day sometimes um, can look when we think about certain principles, especially one of the main principles that people talk about, which they talk about what karma is. In, in this particular case, from one of these, from these seven principles, karma would be categorized under the principle of cause and effect. So let me run it back. I'm going to put out all seven of the principles. Now I'm going to explain the seven principles, at least to the best of my knowledge. But so you can at least know what I'm talking about. Thank you for at least putting the name in there, Kundin, how you say hermetic principles. But these are the seven. The first one is the principle of mentalism. And again, mentalism can also be um, principle of oneness. So everything being one. The second one being the principle of correspondence. So basically another way that people would say this would be as above, so below. So whatever you see up, the same thing down. Um, The third one is the principle of vibration. And I like how my song Catching Vibes is playing at the same time. This is so funny. Um, Or I should say shout out to the booth at Catching Vibes. Um, but the principle of vibration, which is also another um, a law when it comes to attraction. Second, the fourth one being the principle of polarity. So opposites. The fifth one being the principle of rhythm. So honestly, how we talk about how life flows back and forth is the rhythm of life. Um, the sixth one I said, cause and effect. And lastly, the other one is the principle of gender. And not in a particular way you think you might think gender is. Um, But those are those are at least the seven hermetic principles or at least the laws of nature that I'm speaking on. There's so many different ones. I mean, there's laws on human nature, which that book is by um, Robert Greene, which also is the author of the 48 Laws of Power. Him and laws, I swear, he must love laws because he study them and just put them out. But 
there's there's a, there's a multitude of different laws, but these are the seven at least I wanted to at least talk about when it comes to these laws of nature and how they have an impact on our lives, either knowingly or unknowingly. So I'm going to go back and specifically talk about each one, even if I said that I wasn't going to. I'm doing it now. <laughs> so at any point in time, too, if y'all want to come in, you're more than welcome to come in and join and add to the conversation and add to the reasoning. Um, just know that if you do, um, that you are waiving your you know, rights when it comes to being able to be broadcasted because I do put this up on YouTube. So if you're not comfortable with that, then it's fine that you stay within the comments. If not, you're more than welcome to come and join. Now, let me see. You got Hermetic Principles. It's from a book called The Kabbalion. Yes. And because you're saying that, boom, The Kabbalion. I am glad you said that. And if you ever try to look it up, there you go. I know it's backwards, but hey, it's right there. It's because I've read, I've read this. I've read it two times. And to say that I fully understand everything from this book, I would be lying to you. There, this thing, you would have to read it a multitude of different times. You can get a brief understanding and understanding from reading it, but there, there is so much more to explore on it to really get down the, the nitty gritty of what it's talking about. So going back again, um, the first one being the principle of mentalism, which basically is saying that um, everything is one, even from the mind all the way to the physical manifestation of things, the spiritual, the spirit and things itself, everything is one. So oneness with everything, because if 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 the mind is one then the mind is all, then everything is everything. Shouts out to Lauren Hill when it comes to that. But everything on this particular plane. So if you talk in metaphysics, you can everything on this particular plane is all connected in some way, shape or form. Whether if it's, again, something that comes from your mind or something that is physically done, physically seen, spiritually done. So that's why I always talk about the mental, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional. All those different things are all combined. They're all connected. So that's what it is when it comes to the principle of mentalism, that all is there connected. It also taps into the fact of how we can have this whole idea of what the universal consciousness is or this infinite um, consciousness since everything is all and everything is connected and you wonder why you have a certain thought or you think about something sometimes that you may have never heard about this principle would technically fall that would fall under this type of principle um, the second one when it comes to the principle of correspondence which the other name I said this is as above so below so basically, another idea of that would be whatever is a reflection of the outside world also has an impact of what happens to you on the inside and vice versa. So another way of saying that, too, is whatever happens right now, whatever's happening in this pandemic, in this bubble also has an ultimate effect of what happens in your particular block, neighborhood and even your own house. So. That is the as above, so below, as in what you are seeing is also what you're getting at the same time when it corresponds. So when something corresponds, that means that it is a reflection of itself. Um, but that's the that's the second one. Like, again, I'll kind of go back and forth, jump around with this stuff. But let's see in the comment sheet. So things like law of attraction, a.k.a. the secret was um, are a watered down version of the two hermetic principles combined. Um Plus the pro the prosperity gospel. Thank you. I'm glad that you commented on that, and that's the reason. And that's the reason why I also wanted to um, talk about that too, is because we get to this part of when we start to commercialize a lot of these, not only spiritual um, wisdom and teachings, but also just. Some of these things, honestly, yes, they're more esoteric when it means like you would have to literally learn this in, in secret places and groups of stuff of that nature. Once it gets put out into the public and folks are not seeking this stuff out, it, it starts to lose its um, true sense and power because people are trying to make a quick buck on it or 
they're cutting corners on how it's used and the way that they go about using it is not the proper way. So then people start to wonder and think, you know, OK, is this really true or not? I mean, another another great example would end up being and this is shots out to Kundin and Kundin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is when you spoke about the whole idea between um, what a mantra really is versus what um, people are using the mantras to be. So more so when a mantra is not really these sayings that you use and stuff where you would do a lot of that self-talk and saying that I am powerful, I am strong and things of that nature. But a mantra in its particular self is just one of those, not only I've seen is different, different sounds, if not used when in meditation or just in general of, um, I don't know, balancing self. Again, you can correct me on that too, but when you take something, again, yoga is another one. Yoga is another great example of that too. Yoga has also been commercialized so much that you don't get to know truly from yogis and folks who really practice this, the true essence of what it is. We just use it, okay, this is a thing for our weekend um, workout, exercise, things, stuff of that nature. And we're at just the base level of it, knowing that there is a greater spiritual aspect to what yoga really truly is. And it's just not to, for some folks, yeah, go check out, you know, um, women or women go check out men. And again, all these different instructors not really truly doing the knowledge on it, but making some money and stuff off of it. But that, again, I was going off of, I was talking with the law of correspondence, which you already went into it, but the third one of vibration, which is the whole idea of the whole secret of the law of attraction and vibrating. So if you are and you vibrate on a certain frequency, those similar frequencies will be attracted and come to you. That's what the whole idea of what, he's, what was saying in the comments was of the secret. And that's what it's supposed to be is that, okay, if I say that I'm a billionaire and I keep saying that I'm a billionaire, that eventually millions and billions of dollars is going to come my way. That's not necessarily true because, again, you would have to put in the action and the effort. You just can't keep speaking these things. That's the one thing that we've also been... Um, told and also lied about when it comes to the secret is that again the the whole idea of we just keep saying these sayings and things and all of that na in that nature and not putting any action forth towards it because i can keep on saying yeah um i want to be skinny i want to be very skinny i want to be um buffing in shape um i want to get a new laptop i want to be able to um jump very high i want to be able to do backflips and parkour and I keep saying these things and saying these day in and day out, but I'm not doing anything towards getting better in any of those areas. I'm not going outside exercising. I'm not up looking up and researching how to do um, different parkour moves or stretching and any things of that nature. I just keep saying it and saying it and saying it. And then eventually it's supposed to come to me. Um, though, it, uh, even though in the there is a scripture in the Bible that says um, good thing comes to those who wait. I like to challenge that. And say that good things come to those who wait and actively work on figuring out what that's going to end up being. Versus just sitting there and sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Because if, if you just sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait for stuff to happen for you and you don't go out there to put the effort and do it, you have to. Because again, I say it a lot. We are, we are not this body. We are the soul inhabiting this body. So we are energy, frequency, and vibration. Shout out to Nikola Tesla. Um, and anytime that you put in effort, you put in energy towards something, you are going to get something back in return, not just off of, oh yeah, I deserve it. It's like, no, the effort that you put in will become those results. Again, the whole idea, the cause and effect. What you do is going to have a reaction. If you just sit on your butt all day, or you just go and just keep saying things over and over and over again without putting any energy and action into it besides just what you said you're not going to have anything coming back at you you might have the opposite you might have some since you sit down so much you can look up there's there's folks that um there's 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 articles and um research that's been done is that if you sit more than 12 hours a day that you are almost three times or if not more likely to um encounter um different types of diseases health related so i mean if you're saying that you're trying to be healthy but then you sitting down for 12 hours plus you're actually doing the opposite 
You're not helping yourself. So, again, these are just all these perspectives from what I've I've seen and also from what I'm saying. So, again, doesn't mean I'm completely right. I'm just sharing my thoughts. I'm sharing them out to y'all. If y'all have anything else, please do. Please add to it because I do appreciate it um, when it comes to this stuff of these natures and just having a combo. But let's see. I mean, the cybercromatic principles themselves are probably questionable as it is not clear who are the authors they only call themselves the three initiative. Who are they? Yes. Um, there's a lot of, there's, yeah, there's a lot behind it. But I will say this, Kundin, again, we can, we can say that about a lot. We can say that about a lot of information in books. I don't always just go off of everything that's set in stone and said within a book. That's where you do your close inspection and finding because we can find fault in everything. That's why people, I mean, going back to religious example, that's why some people do not, um, you know, believe in religion they're no more spiritual because of the fact that there's um different questions and and faults that they see within the bible within the quran within the torah within all these different types of literature but even though there's faults and things within that literature you can still always find some tokens of wisdom and knowledge the more that you dig deep and you interpret it the way that you're able to you know grab that information out so I take a lot of this still with a grain of salt, but the way that I'm able to take it and apply it and figure out how it works for me, that's why I'm able to speak on a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to the principle of vibration as well as the cause and effect. And I will also say when it comes to the principle of rhythm, a lot of these I've actually had my own personal experiences with, so that's why... When it comes to reading books and reading articles and seeing um, information on it, I can speak the way that I do is because I've lived through it. Again, when it comes to gaining knowledge, the only way you can turn that, at least from my perspective again, the only way you can turn that into wisdom is when, when knowledge is paired with applying, which is basically paired with action. It becomes wisdom. So in my particular case with this stuff, even though all these books that you can read and have, it can be questionable. If you take the information, you're able to siphon it and you're able to find a way that it works for you. Then that ends up turning into your particular wisdom or it can be your family's wisdom or whoever else does know this because you've shared that experience. So I hear you. A lot of these things, a lot of these things is all up in the air. But again, it's up to your intention and your way to intently drive out to find a message but let's see got here in the comments boom publishers are the yogi publication society masonic temple chicago Hmm. yeah because this is this type of this type of wisdom and knowledge they they consider it esoteric so a lot of this is not supposed to be known and put out it even says it in the book itself too if you ever seen it find the book but On all of these concepts, the reason why I wanted to share this is when when you are able to come across stuff like this and you see stuff that happens like this, and I will go back and I will use another religion, a religious example. This is where people will use testaments to these particular laws and justify the way they act. And they behave and they move in their day to day. So another one, for example, of folks who are not who did not believe or don't believe, you know, in in God and religion, but they have an experience that happens to them, whether if it is a near death, whether if it is. Um, experience that notes to them that yo there is something greater than myself and i think it might be allah jesus god etc they tap into the principle not only of cause and effect but also the principle again of vibration and sometimes even polarity um shots out to um intro um into radio in the building appreciate you appreciate you They tap into these things without knowing. Again, sometimes we just have things happen to us and we don't know the specific names, specific titles and 
how that applies. But people have these experiences and they come in contact with these different principles that are within our fabric of our world and us as humans. But again, they don't know how to explain it. So these principles, how I say they have an impact um, on your life, it really depends on your day to day experience and how you start to learn and gain knowledge and wisdom. Because I'll go back again because we talk about it. Um, I want to talk about the principle of rhythm. And with the principle of rhythm is really learning again the highs and lows of what, at least from my perspective, is learning the highs and lows from what happens within life. So being able to be aware of knowing, okay, society's moving in a certain way. And if you go against that, you're going to end up, you know, getting the brunt of that particular wave that happens to you. You might come across it and you might smash into the wave. Or if you're noticing, okay, like right now with the pandemic, unfortunately for a lot of folks that who are going on that wave of, you know, either not getting the vaccine or getting the vaccine, they're going to have a certain consequence and they're going to have a certain action that's going to happen. And right now, for those folks, especially who are not deciding to, to get the shot, it is making it tougher and tougher for them to have a livelihood. Again, you have these mandates in, in certain states, and folks are losing their jobs because they choose not to. And in that particular case with the rhythm, they're going against this full rhythm and setup of life. And that's another another example of of the at least the principle of rhythm too would be when you are you're in a mode where you're very productive we can say again um the whole concept of flow and you are just getting a lot of things done and accomplished on a day to day might even be a week it might even be for a month and it's because of the fact that you found a rhythm you found your rhythm within life rhythm and you're able to continue swinging back and forth with it and you're catching it at the right times and you're able to under, understand and understand, OK, I need to wait right here. All right, it's coming right back now. Let me follow back with it. Let me wait right here. Analogy I can think of is like if you go and you're um, you go to an amusement park and you're on. I don't know if any of y'all have ever been to an amusement park that has like the little sh like little ship. And it swings back and forth like a pendulum, but it's going up and then it's coming right back down into the middle and going back up to the other side. But that would be an idea of what um, rhythm in this particular life would be is if you're noticing that you're getting to your peak of your progress and then you notice that you're going to have a little small dip, you're already preparing yourself to be able to meet it back on the other side. So is learning how to really be aware of that and notice it so then you can catch it beforehand. So learning how to plan and do stuff beforehand, even though life can be unexpected, learning to be in tap with this stuff, even though they're, you know, the names or principles and stuff. Um, but these things happen within your life and you're just like, yo, okay, why? And you just don't have a, a name or explanation to it. But that's one of the other examples on there, especially, uh, I do want to talk about um, polarity as well, but let me see All right there. I'm going to dig deeper into this yogi publication society because there could be some cultural appropriation and this um, dilution of my culture if they um, if they're the publisher. Yeah. OK, the website of combined publisher is namastebullshop.com and it's very weird because they claim the heretic principles are from the Greek and Egypt. Yes, they're, they are, they're speaking of, when they speak of the hermetic principles, if you look back, and you'll find, you'll, you'll find if you, if you get to look into it, you'll find they get it from, um, the name is sometimes hard for me to pronounce, but it's like Trimagestus, but they're talking about like Hermes. And talk about how Hermes was not only the messenger of the gods, but also had these particular principles passed down. I mean, these principles, again, all of these these principles and also this knowledge, wisdom and information, it can still all be tracked back to also to Egypt. And they're in different ways, because if you go back, another person who's known for um, not only medicine, but wisdom also is a is a, a god by the name Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. 
and some of these type of principles and stuff is in there. There's the there's the um was it the green the the um emerald tablets. This information that comes from there too. There's also there's a there is a book. It's called the Otis the Otis book in the world, and it's like forty two different concepts and principles from the Pharaoh of the time. So a lot of this stuff is just not only not only recycled, but it is again like reversions within the version of other cultures. So a lot of this, of course, we when we talk about plagiarism, like yo, some of this stuff like. When it was done correctly, it wouldn't be quote unquote plagiarism, but there, there's a lot of plagiarism that has went on through societies because what happens is when a society is conquered, and I know I'm going way off, but we're coming back with it. When a society is conquered, certain concepts and parts of that culture of the society that was conquered gets retaken and reused for the society that is reigning now. So that's why we have... For me, the example I say is you have Egyptian gods that got remixed into Greek gods that got remixed into Roman gods. And they're all very they're all they're all the same. They're the same entity, but they're changed due to when the societies were conquered. They took those beliefs of gods and their sayings and the concepts and they just turned them into their concepts in that particular case. So, again, I'm I'm all I'm all for when it comes to like really investigating and looking into information and books and making sure that they're they're right on point with stuff. But at times we can get very deep into trying to do that and do that and do that and do that and do that that to the point that we miss out on the main concepts. And that's what I'm trying to just bring is the main concepts. We can look at all of this stuff way back when and we can get lost forever. But it's just bringing that to light so that we can know how this has an impact or how's it how it functions within um our our daily lives um now the last one i want to talk about and then we can move to to the last topic for tonight would be i want to talk about the concept or the principle of of polarity because we talk about it so much within society as well as just in conversations and what polarity basically means that there's opposite sides of a spectrum. So we always talk about the whole idea of a binary system or dichotomies, which is like you only can be on this side, the left, or you can be on the right side, as well as um, you could end up being on this part of that part, but everything being on a spectrum. But with the idea of the principle of polarity, it's showing you that for you to truly know if something is hot, you would also need to know what is cold. And the only way you're able to know the differences on these spectrums is be, it has to vary in different degrees. So we wouldn't know if it's day or night unless we knew the change in degree of there's a light and there's a dark. Even though there's in between where you have, you still got your, you got, see, you have the The morning, then you have the afternoon, and then you have the evening. Even though you would say it's morning and evening, you have the afternoon, which is that in-between. And what polarity is basically bringing is, even though there is these different opposites on the spectrum, there are a multitude of things that ride on that spectrum. But at the end of the day, for you to truly know one side from the other side, you have to know what the other one is or what it is, depending on that degree. But let me see. You got this going in here. Now I'm saying book also publishes books with titles like Anada Yoga, Karma Yoga, and the Secrets of Doctrine of the Rosicrucians. Yeah, the Rosicrucian Cross. Um, they sell um Ganesh statues, tarot cards, and crystals and more. I'm gonna... Again, again, you can call, you can call them out. I ain't tripping about all of that. I'm just getting straight to it. I'm just talking about. Adding the information and putting it there so it can be shown and seen to everybody. If it's from somebody that, you know, is is doing wrong by people and others, shoot, go for it. Again, I'm not even tripping. But just to, sum, just to summarize and just end up on this last point with um, the laws of nature. 
whether you take them for what they were they are or you don't you know care anything when it comes to that just just look and understand in your day to day that you're having some type of um influence from these principles and these are things that cannot be changed you cannot change if i decide to okay go ahead and i come up to one of y'all and just decide to push you there's something's going to happen i can't just push you and then that's it even if you don't respond back with a push the energy is going to shift and change so there's always going to be some type of reaction that's why we have the whole idea of karma that's why he's always going to be saying a cause and effect. You're going to learn about what cause and effect is when you're in school and kids, when you learn in English. So that's always going to be there. But knowing that that even goes further into how that has an ultimate effect of your life, learning about what consequences are because there's a whole idea of cause and effect. That is a law that cannot be changed. You're going to have a consequence regardless. So that idea, the concept when it comes to knowing what the principle and stuff is, is so you can know, dang, OK, I, this started here being so small like oh okay we have learned this when we were young but we got older shoot the consequences to our actions can be big depending on that cause and that effect and what we do as well as again the whole thing on the principle of vibration and of how if i feel good about myself and i walk and i do a number of great things for myself and I keep improving and getting better and better you're going to notice the improvement you're going to notice the effort you're going to notice how you change as you're trying to improve yourself and that in itself falls to that concept of vibration because what you are doing is you're raising raising your energy you're raising your vibration which is also helping you to reach different heights you never thought of so I'll give I'll give a personal example and it could just be, you know, it'd be funny or not. But this for me, example of that would be when I was I used to skate. I don't skate as much anymore, but I should get back into it. But there there are times that there are certain tricks that I could not do. Like one of one of my favorite tricks that I actually learned that made me just trip out and like i was so glad that i was able to do it for my skateboarders out there shout outs to y'all man like i missed out on go skate day this past year like it's in june i always forget but one of the tricks that i learned but it took a while was an inward heel flip and for those who don't know what an inward heel flip is if you, you don't know what a regular heel flip is it is a heel flip with a weird vario that flips in front of you. If you want to look it up, just put inward heel flip. But to the point of to vibration, so I practiced this trick so much on top of the other stuff that I was doing. I would get tired. I would hurt myself. I would fall. But there was one day that after a while I got into the groove of it. And you can say also muscle memory played a part. You can say just, you know, taking the effort and time to do that also played a part. I went for the trick the first time. And this is this was I would say this is a, honestly, this was the, it was the first time I actually really fell from doing a trick. And when I mean fell, as in like I fell over, I was on the ground. I didn't hurt, hurt myself, but I fell. And what I've heard sometimes when you were skating or you do something is. If you when you don't commit to something, that's what's going to happen. But if you really trust in your ability and you commit to it. You end up. Reaping the rewards of it. So after my first time or really falling from trying to do that trick, I go in for it on the second time. And I committed so much that I legitly landed the trick. Yes, I hopped off real quick after because I got so hyped, but I landed the trick. It's because of the commitment. And not only again, going back to vibration, I was putting myself in that state to do so. And again, I just wanted to put the point out there with that, just to say that these concepts and these laws, they're out there. You may not know about it, 
but you can see how some of these can have an impact on your life without you even knowing. But with that, y'all, I'm a, that's why I'm summing up for the laws of nature. If y'all have any more, and this was specifically hermetic principles, universal laws, because there are so many more of them you can find out there. If y'all have any more, please throw it in the comments, share it, and I appreciate y'all for just popping in the, to in the topics, just listening and commenting. Now, before I move on to the last topic for tonight, which is how to build a firm foundation, let me go ahead and finish up and read some more of these comments. Um, well, by their own rules, their publisher sure will face some consequences. <laughs> let them handle that. Karma wasn't really a cosmic um, scorecard, nor really about cause and effect. It's more like a storehouse of memory. Karma just means action. Yeah, that's what. That's really where. That's really where I'm going with that, Kundin. I'm not saying that. Oh, karma is like. Oh, what comes right back? You go. So you know. I'm talking about karma in the aspect of the action. But we use the word so much. I'm. I'm glad that you clarified it. That I didn't get to clarify it more, but that's what I already understand. I should have said it a little bit more, but I know because people use the word karma so much. So it's just like, okay, what is that? It's because people use it so much. So that's why I used it in pairing with cause and effect. Because it is that, that, um, the manage of that, just that action. It's not like there's going to be a reaction. It's just action itself. So I feel you on that. Yeah. Again, I'm I'm not the whole wealth of information and knowledge when it comes to this stuff. I'm just sharing my own thoughts. That's why I like to have back and forth of reasoning and learning from other folks. Because I'm still learning. And I can say that. I'm flawed. I'm still learning. So y'all here with me, always make sure you go and double check on what's being said and what you hear. Because I ain't going to have everything right. But let's see. Before I move on to the next thing, let's see. We got the historian himself, or the historian coming through. The knowledge, wisdom. Hey, what's up? What's going on, Kundin? What's the word? Good to see you in here. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because I was watching a YouTube video earlier today uh, by Sadhguru who wrote the book. He literally wrote the book on karma. He wrote a book called Karma Yoga this year. I think he published it this year, actually. Mm. And uh, he was clarifying like, what karma really is. And yeah, you know, people, especially Westerners, they basically, you know, use karma. They see it as basically a, a secular replacement for their Christian God, basically. Yeah. You know, it's uh, using fear and guilt, right? That in Christianity, it's like, oh, if you do good, you'll go to heaven. If you do bad, you'll go to hell. Yeah. In the afterlife, whereas Westerners use karma as, oh no, you don't have to wait until the afterlife. You will, if you do bad, you will face, you know, bad consequences. If you do yeah. good, you face good consequences in your current life. So it's almost like a big cosmic scorecard that's how they treat it but it's actually so much more than that it's like uh, it's not about fear and guilt it's about liberation as you were saying mm. yeah yeah i just again and i'm, I'm yeah. glad that you 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 came in and, and also just putting it there in the comments because that's what i was already understanding about what karma was but mm -hmm. just to again to make it um relevant and relate to folks is because we use it so much. Again, like I was talking about yeah. a lot of this stuff of these like principles and things, we have sayings and things, especially in English. I know they're, again, they're in different, you know, languages within different societies and different, you know, civilizations. But what happens, and I'll use the, the, an analogy or example of, I mean, telephone, we say that a lot. So the original aspect and idea of maybe what that word and what those things meant after centuries and civilizations down, 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 down again, something gets lost. We may have some type of, you know, concept and idea of it. But again, like you said, we might have just only a piece of it and not the whole. And like once we start learning to put more of the pieces of stuff together, it starts to help with the widening of that perspective. So, again, I don't know all of it, but I know what I know what I know. 
and I've I've applied what I know with these with these concepts and these principles, and I've seen the outcomes work for myself. Yes, is there more that can be added to it? Hundred percent. Is there some things that could be taken away because it's being used in an inappropriate way? Of course, it can. But again, it's all the whole idea too of the trial and error. But just knowing that these are concepts that are out there and that they permeate through our lives day in and day out, just to get some type of at least starting point on it, I like to hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, when he was um, giving the lecture to Arjun, who didn't want to fight his brothers on the battlefield, mm. uh, his cousins, you know, um, fighting for justice because they were his cousins, so it was like a civil war, and that was when he gave the Gita, uh, and that was when he explained karma yoga as just doing your dharma um, mm. without uh, worrying about the fruits of the dharma doing the so dharma in this case is doing what you were uh, born to do born. okay okay your action um, it's um it's a butcher translation but that thing is close enough for westerners and and you do your and, and your dharma is according to your varna, which again is often mistranslated and really watered down as you know the caste system mm. with this huge hierarchy. But in the old days, it was not a vertical thing; it was a horizontal thing. Mm. Uh, so no varna was better than the other, and it wasn't by birth. Yeah, you can actually choose to change your varna from one to the other, meaning varna in in the modern context would be, again, very loosely translated as just your job, right, or your career. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. But it's more than that. It's like, it's so tied to your innate core gift, core skill that you were really born to really like, express in the world. You mm. know, that's your varna. Uh, and and it's built over time, so that's why. And yes, you can change it. Uh, you know, even though it's horizontal, you, it does take you know a certain amount of time. Even if you were to change it, like to change it, uh, because it's about developing the skill over time. Mm. You know, and even in the modern context, we hear about you know the so-called ten thousand hour rule and all. Yeah. That, right. Yep. So, yeah, kind of similar to that. And all of that is related to karma because karma is basically memory. Like there is huge uh, thousands of years of memory, like millions of years of memory that are encoded in your cells, like to, to create you right now. Yes. From, you know, not just your own generations, but even like your past lives, all of those is, is stored as, you know, your karma. And and you have the right to create new memories, and that's yes. why it's called liberation. That's why it's not just this cause and effect. It's like you can, like you're not the victim of this karma thing. Mm. Yeah. And I'm glad that you flipped that even more with it too, because 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 I'm gonna keep saying because I'm just playing, but that's why we have this whole idea with connotations of words. So mm-hmm. when words get a bad rap, most of the time, a majority of the time, people see it in that light. So when people think of karma, yes, people know that there's you know good and bad karma. But most of the time when people bring up karma, people already insinuate that it's something negative that's about to happen. It's like, oh, you better not do that, or you know, karma's gonna get you, or you know, say karma's exactly. a bee, or they say karma's a bee because what? And then what happens is, like you said, right? They might as well say God will punish you. <laughs> Just say they what perpetuate you mean, it. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they perpetuate yeah. the victimhood yeah. in the whole aspect mm-hmm. of karma. So people are avoiding mm-hmm. that, not knowing that again, honestly. And since you you brought it to the point that is memory. I mean, literally, if you're saying that karma is gonna quote unquote get you. <laughs> some people would have thought back in the head, it's like, well, how karma gonna get me? 
And it was like, well, because memory. This is where it remembers. <laughs> Karma <laughs> remembers if it's that case. But then the thing is, like you're saying, it's a whole storehouse of memory. So this goes back to not only your current self, but past selves and past lives for those who subscribe to reincarnation as well as what yeah, is in so your DNA the, and genes. The problem is, especially since you know people assume karma to be this cosmic skull card that adds to this effect, right? Yeah. The, the problem is that people, uh, most people tend to get stuck in their recurring patterns, which is really another way of saying they get stuck in their memory, right? The, mm. So even when they're interpreting the present moment, they are interpreting it through their the past data, which is karma. Like so, and I even said alluded to this last year, right? Like even when I see your face, yeah, it's not your current face. It's it's like there's a few seconds delay, and it's not just because of Instagram. <laughs> it's like even if I was were to see you in person, there's a few seconds delay between like me, my eyes you know, the light hitting my eyes and then processing, my brain processing it, right? There's like, there's a delay of processing. So it's oh, real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So even real time isn't actually real, right? There's already that delay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a few seconds delay. And, and so I'm already looking at the you through the past, like even in that direct, you know, looking at you. Yeah. But then there's an additional layer where not only is there a delay between my eyes and my brain there's another delay which is my interpretation of you when i look at you and that interpretation like overlaid with memory that whole thing is karma like mm. 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 but yeah uh i'm 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 grateful that you went ahead and you you definitely um fleshed that out a lot more mm -hmm. um because again, I'm just, both of us is just shedding light on things. Yeah. I mean, so when we say we're stuck in karma, in a, I mean, on that surface level, it can be true because, like I said, most people are stuck in their memories. They don't try to bother to change their memories or their recurring patterns, their yes. self sabotage patterns, or even their biases, like their racial biases, their sexist biases. They don't, they don't bother trying to, try to change it. Yes. So we're stuck in our own and each other's like karma and karmic patterns in that sense, you know, mm. as a logical, natural consequence of uh, of just nature, of human nature, right? Yes. Of systemic nature yeah, yes. in that sense. But it is liberation because it means we can change our karma. We can change those memories. We can change our biases. We can change our sabotage patterns and we can create new patterns and we can create better stories instead of living in our biases and memories. Yeah. Because shout outs to um Dr. Bruce Limpton in the book Biology mm -hmm. of Belief, we come to to learn and understand that literally that epigenetics and how mm -hmm. your genes and your brains and you know different neural pathways and connections can are malleable and can be changed and retrained to help you reach growth in whatever aspect you're looking towards. And again, mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is again, there's a saying, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has already been here. It's just that now it's reemerging and is coming through different forms of media and people mm -hmm. sharing and learning what they're getting from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But with that note, yeah. do you have anything else that you would like to add to this whole idea of the law, of laws of nature, at least in the universal yeah, just, aspect? Just like you said, also to take it with a grain of salt, because I'm, like I said, I find there. So even the law of attraction, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it actually comes from for a the prosperity gospel, which in turn yes. comes from the genocidal. Uh, uh, manifest destiny, but yes. B, it comes from a very watered down uh, version of the first three of the seven hermetic principles. They didn't even include all seven, right? Mm -hmm. They like uh, when they say, and they twisted it when they say like 
attracts like because it ignores the law of uh, the principle of polarity, for example. Yes. Right? So mm-hmm. it only includes the principle of mentalism and correspondence and vibration meaning. Yep. When you use your mind to correspond to what you want to attract using your vibration, basically what that's what they mean by law of attraction. This made up law they created. Yeah. Uh, which doesn't even exist. But now, like I'm looking at, you know, the source behind the principles of my, of the hermetic principle, I'm like, I need to find out where even they these come from. Yes, and I know, I know they, I know they come from somewhere else for sure. I yeah, know they exactly because it's not only Greek. It's the not only coming from Greek. Like, the publisher is totally at you know trash. Like I'm looking at it, I'm like. Their website is namastebookshop.com, which is itself is totally cultural appropriation. And then they're selling Ganesh statues, Saraswati statues, tarot cards. I'm like, oh my God, they're like uh, a buffet of cultural appropriation, like the whole site. I'm like, oh my God. Like, And they published this book, The Cabalion, where the seven hermetic principles are. Yes. So yeah, it's to like see it... Uh, to apply it like lightly and loosely and then yes. be on this quest, be on this question, like where mm-hmm. does it really come from? And then because I guarantee if you find out the source of this and where it really comes from, it will take it to another level for you. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. Because let me show you an example. The Enneagram, right? Yeah. The Enneagram, the, the nine, you know, which are the nine types which is similar to personality testing, like basically like uh, mm. the so-called Myers-Briggs. Uh, and by the way, Myers-Briggs is also like connected with eugenics and all that. It's a whole other uh, rabbit hole. But let's stick to Enneagram example, right? When I was on the surface level and only listening to the white European teachers, right? Because those were the only books available, right? Yes. And it didn't really help me that much because they sold it as a personality test to me, right? As like, and they sold me like all the, all, oh, these are all the good things about you, right? Yes. Strength finders on top of that? Strength finders is a different thing, yeah. Okay. I just, yeah. Okay. yeah. I know the Myers so, Briggs, but then it made me think of strength right. finders as well, but go ahead. And then I did a deep dive into where it really comes from. Again, these white Europeans, they, they stole it from people of color, from indigenous people. They, uh, the founder is Japanese Bolivian, uh, mm-hmm. Oscar uh, Ichado. And when I looked up the original in Japanese with the Japanese characters, with the yes. translation, the direct translation, and some were not even properly translatable, so I had to ask, a Japanese friend of mine who could read in Japanese to tell me like what this Japanese character actually means. And it was so like eye-opening for me because Ichado originally conceived it as not this uh, ironically ego-soothing personality type, but the opposite. He saw it as your ego... Uh, your ego defense mechanisms. Mm. That's what they are, actually. They're like, and so like I am an Enneagram 9, for example, right? It was sold to me as the peacemaker, right? Yes. But in the Japanese version, it's, I think, it's the slot. Yes. So the, the lazy, basically like, uh, sort of like a lazy, uh, person who is afraid of so it's like basically yes I was afraid of confrontation but the real reason why I was afraid of confrontation as a so-called peacemaker is because I was afraid of exerting too much energy I was afraid of exhaustion so I'd rather Mm. be in that docile fake peace of this numb like you know contentment of no energy like, I would rather have no energy than too much high intense energy. It's basically so mm. I wouldn't fight with people. Mm. And I would have this passive aggressive anger and sad, this low level thing. Mm. And I would never have realized all of those patterns if I had just stuck with the surface level of the white interpretation. They were going back to the roots. And, and the Enneagram is only like a few decades old. Like, he also, 
of mm. Shadow formed it like a few decades ago, right? And of course, yeah. there are claims that, of course, every white person, when I bring it up, they will, they'll make similar claims like, oh, it's been around since Egypt, thousands of years. They say the same thing every time I bring it up with anything, you know? They were like, oh, no, Enneagram is old. And yeah, but the person who formalized it was this, um, was these two individuals, the Greek Armenian guy and, and then this Japanese Bolivian guy. Yeah. And in fact, Oscar Ichado even disowned his own student. Yeah. And a lot of the white European translations are based on uh, the student that he disowned. That's yeah. a whole other layer to it. Yeah. He disowned his own student because he was not following what he was teaching. Like, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, that's where you start. You have a starting point, and then that's where you mm -hmm. start to dig deeper after that. But yeah. on top of doing all of that digging, making mm -hmm. sure that you still keep, you know, the main concepts and you modify them to how they work for yourself. So mm -hmm. what I was telling you earlier, um, you can, if you want to, or if you probably already heard of and know, I mean, the Kabbalion, I had a feeling, and I mean, Part of it, I'm like, correct, but it's still around there that a lot of this information originally from Hermes within Greek mm -hmm. came from the Egyptian god Thoth, like I talked about mm -hmm. earlier. So if you go into look into Thoth, there is there is different um, tablets written like the, I said, the Emerald Tablets, like the Emerald Tablet. There's verses in there that speak about these hermetic principles in mm -hmm. a different particular way. So, again, it was. You say in this part plagiarized and brought on to another part of the world, mm -hmm. and then Greek, and then that was brought down from Greek into Roman to where we are now. What happens is people formalize it from there, but originally don't always go back to be like, okay, this is where it's originally gotten from, and they make their own interpretations mm -hmm. from it again. It's not like mm -hmm. the this is where the original text come from. Now we're gonna give you an interpretation of our own notes and text from that text. So for if y'all anybody's mm -hmm. looking into the hermetic principles, um go go to Egypt, look at Thoth, and I can already probably tell you too that it's probably more beyond Thoth too because you also have the um the Sumer, um the Sumerian um civilization is supposed to be the oldest recorded in history at least of what we know. But again, like to me it gets to that point of the whole idea and the whole construct of credibility. Mm. And we yeah, can keep exactly. going down that line over and over and over. Who's credible? Who wrote this? Who wrote him? Wrote that? And I just like to get to the to the aspect of okay, let me look at the content. All right, does this content make sense to me? All right, something about this is weird. All right, let me go do my um, research and check on it. Then you start doing your back research check, and you find it. Oh, this is where it's actually some of the parts originated from. There might be more beyond that, but now from this section. So I go back and I'm like, oh, from learning from Egypt and Thoth, okay, this is what the concepts now, these type of ways that he explained it, or they explained it, makes a lot more sense than what's in the Kabbalion or et cetera. So yeah, I'm, exactly. all, I'm all for that because we, we definitely got to know where we're getting this information from because then if not, we're continuing to um, add to the, infor the misinformation to folks mm -hmm. and to just perpetuate the use of this information and misinforming people again. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, did you, did you yeah. have any more that you wanted to yeah, add on the, top of that? Other reason I bring it up is because like, you know, some people, when I bring up these things, they think I'm just, you know, intellectualizing or mental masturbation or whatever you want circle choking or whatever you want to call it yeah uh, and then it's like no actually some of these things can actually impact public policy even right they can impact how laws are legislated they can impact the biases of police officers right mm -hmm. like like the law of attraction, right? Like, for mm -hmm. example, which I said, it's the watered down version of um, a combination of, of three. The, the first three uh, hermetic principles combined with the prosperity gospel, right? Uh, they simply replace God with universe, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And 
let's suppose you go to a loan officer and you know and you are are you know poor black woman right and their loan officer is a white man right yeah. who believes in the law of attraction right and you really believe in your vision but the loan officer is not only white which means she already has yeah. racist bias and sexist bias right mm mm-hmm. uh, against this black woman but because of he believes in the law of attraction right he's going to believe in a classist bias on top of the other biases he already has so he's going to look at this person and be like oh you know this person doesn't need this loan she should you know pull herself by her own bootstraps and you know you know raise her own money her own capital from friends first and like and so he would deny the loan right that's such just a simple example right even at the lower level but the oh, yeah. higher level is going to impact the even you know the government loans that people get depending on what legislators do on how they implement and legislate public policy in the first place like the SBA loans right if mm-hmm. legislators believe in the law of attraction they're going to have similar uh biases are going to be you know legislated and enforced into public policy so that's why i keep bringing it up for me it's a very practical sort of just thing i'm not just wasting time just being intellectual intellectualizing so i want to bring that up too i'm glad you did because that was my main point again with why i wanted to touch on the laws of nature is because how you don't know how they can have an impact in your daily day-to-day life mm-hmm. and that is a great example of basically the misuse Mm-hmm. other principles and laws is that it gets exactly. to a point where it creates the complete opposite of what it's supposed to really do instead of not mm-hmm. inform it informs to a point where it excludes what these mm-hmm. laws are supposed to do or what these laws they do but when not interpreted correctly they are meant to help enhance and help you um grow and find aspects in life and figure things out because again Nobody has the full road map or nobody has a book to life to be like okay when I get this age I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this everybody has their own journey have their own place that they have to um partake in life and they have to figure it out step by step so literally that's what these concepts are just out there floating and once you find them and you're able to apply them and have them work for you within your favor and again it's on both sides it's the whole mm-hmm. idea of a balancing act if you if you understand that that's the key to all these mm-hmm. um principles and concepts if you if you understand or you understand the whole idea of what balance is then you'll be able to pick up these concepts very easily and what i mean very easily at least at the bare minimum and then you can go deeper into them like what what you were um speaking on Kundin and, and what i'm just bringing up to how i got it cuz again everybody's going to have a different interpretation that's that's just information and that's just us being as humans and if it makes sense to me and it's relatable then I'm able to apply it but again when it's misapplied or applied in the wrong sense you start to create different disparities and you start to create mm-hmm. different um ideologies and thoughts that break things down whether build, rather than build things up so I'm glad you brought that point to that case cuz again it's almost like we talk about the pros and the cons and that kind of was just like yo the pro is like you can figure stuff out but then the con is like yo if a person believes this they start thinking back to this and then how they apply it to you can mess up with how you can live and function in your own life so now nah, I'm glad you brought that up mm-hmm. see see again yeah. i can talk to the screen all day y'all but i appreciate when kunin comes in and i appreciate when y'all share in the comments cuz again i'm I'm literally I don't I'm saying I don't know everything and I'll just share what I come to understand and when people add more layers you see what happens you see you see Mhm Yeah like for example the principle of polarity right like the pro would be like I would hope that people would use it to embrace diversity and inclusion to see that like the opposite aspects of the universe yeah embrace all aspects of the universe which means to also embrace uh all kinds of human beings right or diverse kinds of human beings yeah. to be inclusive right but another way to interpret it or to misinterpret it 
you know, the con could be, it can also be interpreted as, oh, we must encourage conflict and, you know, have like a, uh, have a lot of conflict in everywhere in society to encourage polarity. And yes. they are literally like the relationship teachers who, who have taught uh, to, to, to actively encourage, you know, conflict. Like there's a difference between embracing conflict and not being afraid of it. Yeah. And actually actively encouraging it and doing it on purpose, you know. Mm. There it is, y'all. But with that, we can keep going on this one. I know that's why I didn't want to because literally if I wanted to, I could do a separate a separate show for each one of the principles. Maybe mm-hmm. in the future we'll see. But that was it for right now, y'all. But for the last topic for tonight, and again. Anyone is welcome to come in. The only caveat to that is that, yes, this goes up on YouTube. So if you're not comfortable with this being out anywhere publicly, then you're still very more than welcome to be in the comments and share from there. If not, come join. Now, last topic that we have for tonight, and again, it is very open-ended, but for those who don't know, I make these topics and pair them together on purpose. I'm going to say it again until you get tired of me saying it. I pair these on purpose because they connect together for particular reasons, okay? So the last topic we have for tonight is and uh, how to build a firm foundation. Now, where I'm going with this, talking about building a firm foundation, this is going off of the whole concept and talk about the laws of nature. Okay, now we know that these these different types of laws of nature, these are things that happen within life and they have an effect and they have some type of impact through our day-to-day lives, okay? Now, how do we go about building a firm foundation knowing some of this how do we build a life that is not only fulfilling but also it is effective in whatever um dharma or you can say the vishna or what like you have that you were saying that we have to do within this life so that's where i'm talking about when it comes to building a firm foundation we can use the analogy of a house we can use the analogy of whatever you want to talk about when it comes to building something. So the main thing with how to about building a first, um, building a foundation is learning about what are those steps that's going to help you become, you know, a better version of yourself or how to help you, you know, achieve whatever goal or, you know, vision and purpose you have in your life. So that's what I'm talking about when it comes to building a firm foundation. Um, do you have anything you want to start with, Cool Nimmin, before oh, I go into your tent? So you mean like building a firm foundation of yourself, of your person, like as, as a person, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in that many, aspect. There are so many, you know, routes, I mean, so many ways you can go off with that topic. Yeah. Again, I do it general so I can have a lot of stuff to talk about. When I have mm-hmm. specific things, then yes, we talk about it specifically. That's why... Again, I, I take into consideration everyone coming in because then everyone can be like, okay, then what specific you want to talk about there is like, exactly. It's whatever, you know, comes up. Um, it also depends on the individual, right? On exactly. The, on the case by case basis. Like some people are going to need some, the so-called uh, the mindset work, right? Working on their limiting beliefs. And, and if you work with me, like with the Akashic Records, you can even work on your soul vows and soul contracts from past lives and things like that mm. um, and then you can uh, work on your your daily habits and your daily commitments uh, changing your habits uh, a little bit at a time can build over it can, it can snowball into a big thing down the road and that would be like the Japanese principle of Kaizen where like small changes over time become big changes down the road Yes. Right. so that's more on the external practical strategic thing so it's like outer work or inner work right yes and then there are also specific areas of your life right like, like improving your career business finances etc that area improving your uh, romantic relationships your family relationships right that's another area right yes uh, and then yeah, and then improving your relationship with your own creativity would be another area. So yes. yeah, so it depends on the individual. There are so many like ways you can go about it. Hello. Very true. Hey, good Kimberly. morning. 
What's the word? Peace and love. Thank you for coming on. Nah, I had to like I was I've been listening to the different topics. I love them because they're very thought provoking, um, and evoke um a person to actually challenge their thought process because we don't all process things the same. Exactly, <laughs> and <clears throat> we all have our own perspective as to like certain topics and this is very interesting in the sense of because this is something I always talk about when I say to someone when it comes to business when it comes to you as an individual if the foundation is not right yeah everything is going to be off mm -hmm. <laughs> so even up to the way we raise kids how we grow them up that's the foundation that's the first foundation that's being set for any and every individual, if you brought up with the wrong teachings yes. and, and the wrong perspective as to what life is about and how to deal with certain challenges um, instead of having it, like emotional outbursts, because I, I've worked with kids for the past seven years. Mm. Um, I got to understand as well from a child's perspective, if a child is going to be left to have... Um, a, a violent outburst mm -hmm. and you don't realize that by the time they reach the age of 10 15 15 stop at late but by the time they reach the age of 10 their child is gonna already it's here in their mindset that oh, okay so when I'm angry I can just start slamming and breaking and getting violent with anything and everything so that becomes mm -hmm. a destructive way of expressing one's emotions yes. because the foundation was off from the beginning. <laughs> yes. So, so, so that's how I perceive setting a good foundation with everything. It applies, as I said, with business as well. If the foundation of which you've started a business with is off, if you started using uh, dirty money, if you started using it, riding on the backs of sp specific individuals, if you've stolen somebody's business idea, yes, it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> yeah and the saying if yeah i mean the saying that the chicken's gonna come home to roost like you know what you do in the dark comes to light like we can we can use all these different sayings but i mean to your point to your point when i even say this um even though we all have you know different ways of like you said thinking and processing as well as ways we address topics and learn from them there's some there is some universal and similar ideas on our ways to building what a firm foundation is and one of one of those key things when it comes to building mm -hmm. a firm foundation the first thing in all of this and i say it every time because it's just true um the first one of those first aspects and steps you can put it wherever you want in the steps but awareness that's the first key it's like if you know you're about to start something you gotta have an idea the plan okay where am i going to set up with this okay how do i really address and talk to somebody like how do i even go and get a loan for a particular um you know business where do i even want to start plotting this land do i put it on sand do i put it on um you know concrete where do i begin with this stuff so i mean for me one of the universal at least thoughts to have to start with that is having the awareness so you can know how to begin starting where you're going to plan that and also the ability out. of wanting oh, to sorry. Wait. <laughs> what? All right. Hi. Um all right. Um go ahead, Kimberly, then I'm gonna let you go in after that, Kunin. <laughs> no, it's the also having a, a teachable mind as well. Because mm. if you're not gonna have a teachable spirit or a teachable mind, then there's no use even trying to ask anyone because you're gonna have a know it all attitude. So you have to have a teachable heart and a teachable mind so you can learn to master whatever it is you're trying to, if you want to, when I, when I come out of a bad mental situation, you have to be teachable. Someone mm -hmm. that's going to help teach you how to project certain emotions a certain way or how to handle certain things in a certain way, how yes. to deal with everything in a certain way, how are you going to be able to learn from someone that's already mastered a game where you're not going to be teachable. What are you there to learn? Nothing. <laughs> mm. I, I get with that word um i just want to add in there i'm gonna let cooling um continue um to that point then um openness i feel like that's another universal mm -hmm. one there is just openness but go ahead cooling 
Yeah, I was just saying I actually taught a workshop on awareness on Saturday, a writing workshop. Are you doing it this Saturday? Uh, no, I did it last Saturday. No, I'm saying are you going to uh, do one this Saturday? Because I know I got to come in um, on something and definitely come and support. I just know I've been busy, busy, but I want to support. Yeah, not this Saturday. I don't know when I'll do it again. Uh, so far, I've just been uh, doing it uh, whenever I want to rather than on a regular basis. I feel that. Uh, and yeah, just because uh, speaking of awareness, I've been really more careful about uh, how much uh, energy I put into things, you know, and how much energy I give away. Yes. Since it's a free workshop and not like burn myself out and things like that. So so that's why so far it's not a regular thing. Yeah, at some point it might be a regular thing. So yeah, it was on writing from awareness versus writing from attention where I would take people through the experience of what attention is, basically, which is like their like their intellect. And then mm. and then and then I would have them write from attention, and then I would take them through the actual visceral experience through an, an experiment that I would have them do on themselves uh, in real time. I would guide them through it, and basically like an observation experiment, right? That yes. actually experience on what awareness is, and then and then they would ha- I would have them write from that place of awareness, mm. and. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned openness too, because part of awareness is uh, it's actually being aware of the the open space in front of you. Uh, because too often, even when we enter a room, like we notice the the objects in the room, but we don't notice the spaces between the objects. Mm. And then when we look at people, we tend to objectify ourselves and each other instead of noticing the space somebody occupies and really seeing who they actually are and how yeah. they move in the world, how they how they are the space themselves. Mm. Yeah. And that is that is that is very true. Um it mm-hmm. also reminds me of miss another book a friend of mine told me about, which is um power versus um force. And that whole idea of the concept between what power truly is and what force is. And mm-hmm. like you were talking about, that, a lot of the examples is like when you walk into the room, like um, the, the ability of you to just command, not even try to command, but you come in, you have all that attention verted straight towards you. That's in that sense of having that power versus coming in there and you don't you didn't know you as a kid. Mm-hmm. Again, from your example, Kimberly, you know, 10 years old, you know, when you get upset because you're not getting enough attention, you decide right when you come in that door, you come in, you slam the door and you start pushing stuff over <laughs> Oh, you see, I'm knocking out my headphones and everything. But you do that, and in in turn, literally, you are forcing it. And you you notice that one of them is done effortlessly, and one is done with extreme effort and waste of energy. But there is always still, again, the whole the whole thing of the the binaries, the polar opposites, and how things can complement each other is always again about finding that balance. Which yeah. for me, a building a firm foundation, one of them, I would say, like maybe even the middle, maybe towards the end is a balance is once you start to figure out, OK, what do I need to start building and creating this stuff? So the awareness now you got to be open to the fact of like, OK, I don't kind of know a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Right? Who do I have in my corner that can, you know, maybe start this foundation or like lead me around and be like, OK, what is what is this mm-hmm. thing right here mean or how do I start putting this part mm-hmm. together? And then having that part there, you start to figure out once you start or you, once you get all the other pieces going and moving, that's where that balance comes into play. It's like, okay, so now how's that whole idea of like maintaining and figuring out, okay, when one working part is starting to lose its function, how do I go about addressing it? Versus just letting it just go to waste because, well, oh, that other person built it. So, I mean, I don't know how to do it, which another and y'all again, y'all jump in whenever you want to. Another <laughs> one I would say, too, would be um, basically um, autonomy. And basically being able to after you've gotten all together is knowing how to be able to do this on your own. So not just the whole idea of somebody 
um, just gives me the fish or they give me the product or they give me the idea or they give me this. No, you literally have that person almost. Yeah, they teach you how to do that. So then you basically know what to end up doing. And then as you start to grow with the experience, you add on and you might just flip it a different way that works for you versus how the other person end up doing it. Just kind of how we talked about previously in the previous topic of like, okay, you find all this information, but the way that you apply it, which knowledge turned into wisdom, as you apply it, you see how that ends up working for you. It might be completely different for, for you, Kimberly. It might be completely different for you, Kundin. But for me, it ended up working this way. But the beautiful yeah. thing about that is you've had those, again, those stepping stones of either awareness, the openness, the balance. Now mm -hmm. you're really being able to be autonomous and use those, those parts to help you continue to um, build, if not maintain this um, foundation. Yeah. And, and one of the things as well is because I know – I had to go through certain things. So whenever I, like I do a lot of, um, I, I strongly believe in self-evaluation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I did a whole <laughs> on Facebook, like we've been doing a lot of um, and, and topics that relate to self-evaluation, what triggers you, what doesn't trigger you and so on and so forth. And also I'm learning certain things that were instilled when the foundation was first laid Mm. So that's, I feel like the first, it's like the, what the tooth pulling process <laughs> of having to unlearn a lot of things that, and, and the saddest part is something that I've also had to learn and understand is that not everyone is ready to unlearn certain things that have yes. already been into them. And also seeing it in the older generation, we kind of have a little bit more hope because we can be more open now to learning certain things and how to deal with certain things. Not yes. all of us, but majority of us are at that point. But to unlearn for somebody that's at the age of 50 and over, it's more painful, I guess, for them because they know this is my way of thinking, this is my way of speaking, this is my way of reacting, and I'm going to mm -hmm. stick to it. Mm -hmm. And also the thing of um these are all topics that i've actually <laughs> i've touched on but we gave them different titles of there's a difference between fear and respect mm. mm -hmm. and that's something that a lot of us also have to learn as you say when you walk into a room for me when i look at it i'm like it's a, do people fear you or do they respect you because mm. there's a difference mm -hmm. When, when somebody respects you, I feel like you don't even need to jump on top of a bridge and shout, respect me, respect me. And with a microphone in hand, no, your character, I strongly feel that your character should demand respect. Mm -hmm. What you carry to be able to demand respect when you walk into a space and people need to know, oh, okay, this person, there's certain things they're going to allow and there's certain things I can't do around this person. Yeah. Just what they're, what they're sending out. You know, so so that's how I strongly feel about that as well. And also, it comes down to a thing of unlearning so many different things that were instilled into us as individuals that are generally, like for me, for example, coming from a single parent home, I grew up with a tough mom. My mom mm. was tough as nails. So my brother, a friend of mine, taught me, um, I was talking to him about it, and he says, do you know, I just realized that my mom grew me up like the type of man or grew me into the type of man that she wanted. Mm -hmm. That's usually what happens. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So because he, he was having the struggle and he's like, Kim, am I a wimp? I'm like, no, why? So he's like, nah, I just feel like there's a lot of women that I've messed with that took advantage of me and my softness so and, you know, and now he's had to come to a point where he's had to unlearn a lot of things that his mom had instilled into him and re really now evaluate that foundation, practically dig it up and create another one Yeah, because of that thing of, and he said, you know what your mom actually did with you? And I was like, okay, what? And he says that your mom grew you up to be a strong woman to withstand heartbreak, but not a very sensitive one as well. And a loving one. So I was like, oh. It made me understand to a point because I was the type of female that didn't want to cry. Mm. Crying was a sign of weakness 
and you don't show people your weakness in that sense. So there was a lot of things that we had to learn to pull out of that foundation and be like, no, 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 this is yeah. this this is wrong. So I gotta retrain myself. Screaming on top of my voice doesn't give me respect. Doesn't get me people to respect me or listen to me. You know yeah. all those concepts of my character. had to i had to re look at it and be like okay now nah, so you off here there's certain things that are just not right <laughs> beautiful yeah and i'm to add on to your point and i mean also kudos to you being able to do so cuz for some folks that's that's still a everyday struggle if not that's why folks um distract themselves with you know multitude of things whether if it's drinking entertainment you know going out not being able to uh, face that that person in the mirror because mm-hmm. of the fact that it's too hard and that they've already been not set you can say still set in their way but they are not really fully ready to address those things because it'll bring a lot of heartbreak and it'll show that they're not as perfect or as happy or as you know great as they may seem to other folks and they don't want to be fake so almost living with that whole idea of what people call the imposter syndrome and mm-hmm. like feeling like you know you're an imposter because of the fact that you know this stuff about you but you don't want to address it but on the outside other people see you a different way so you got to continue to put on this facade which a lot of us continue to do every single day to just keep on living throughout but to add to your point that's another universal i would say or at least another common um step to do which is to um evaluate is to do the introspection is to go in and check in like okay this has been working oh dang do i might have to just start all the way back from ground zero knowing that this only lasted for about maybe 5 to 6 years with this type of material am i ready to do that am i ready to pull the trigger on that and really taking your time to be introspective and evaluate if that is going to work for you and then know what your plan is to go further on with that and part of that process too I will add in there and again this this is a process I know y'all can definitely say otherwise is um learning how to um give yourself grace slash loving on yourself and um being able to have that in there to know that yes there's going to be um parts of yourself that you're trying to go back and you know reprogram because what you've learned was not necessarily a good part for your building and your life but it was learned from parents or even society mm-hmm. but you go back and you con- and you feel that fear you feel that you failed you feel like you're a failure because of the fact that you're going back to go look at something that ain't working and on that part that's where i say you want to you got to give yourself some grace and love on yourself because of the fact that literally honestly And this is shots out to to my brother um Rocky Angelini. It's another dope individual and artist. He said it. Said mistakes is what makes us. Like honestly, that's that I say that's just true to the word is that failure is one of the best teachers that you can have. That doesn't mean you continually to fail on the same thing over and over. Is no. Once you have failed p- past a certain um point, you know, okay, this particular way that I did it did not work. let me mm-hmm. figure out something else so literally making mistakes is a part of this life and knowing how to bounce back from that and to be gracious and love on yourself from doing that i feel like i know that as no feeling i know that helps to create those steps <clears throat> into building a firm foundation of yourself and your trajectory in life yeah and it's amazing learning about yourself cuz my personal journey of learning more about Kimberly and what she likes what she doesn't like and moving away from from family and also finding myself in a space where i just focused on me and i got to figure out that hey you love classical music it does something within the in the parts of you that just calms you down and zones you out and keeps mm. you you know because growing up I wasn't exposed to that type of stuff so I wouldn't know what I liked and what I didn't like and then it comes to the age of 27 and I'm like wow I love this I love listening to Motown I love listening to classical I <laughs> you know I love sketching I love doing this I love doing that finding the things that bring you joy mm. and peace are also like very important things for me because of 
having to do to like suffer with like anxiety and depression and all that stuff because of not knowing when I got a chance to live on my own, not knowing how to handle living on your own without that influence of your parents or your family. So now you like, okay, so it's me and my thoughts <laughs> yeah. and this character that they've imparted into but you look at yourself after some time, like, I don't even realize who this person is because this person doesn't know how to deal with life's challenges without those people, mm. without having to look to them and be like, what do I have to do? I'm in this kind of situation. This person said this. This person did that. So <laughs> I had to learn to go to that point where I'm like, okay, so Kimberly deals with this like that. So when she feels anxious, she listens to classical music. When she feels anxious, she writes poetry. When she feels anxious, she does this. When she's not even feeling anxious anymore, she still listens to Motown. She still soaks herself up in, in, in other things. And it gets to a point where you know yourself. Like that self-evaluation, it's always a learning process. I love learning more things about myself and also figuring out that your mind can grasp so much that you don't even understand <laughs> how much yeah. you can... I think we sell ourselves short so much that when you do get to that point where you say, okay, I found my foundation and rebuilding. It's a beautiful process, but it's also a process whereby you shouldn't be looking at everybody else's buildings. <laughs> like he's building a skyscraper. I'm building a block of flats he's building you know so you gotta focus maybe you he's at the penthouse phase and you still at the pouring of the concrete for your foundation phase yeah. and that's completely fine it's okay and what society puts in us is like it's a rat race everything is a rat race and this whole concept of it's a rat race is put in within our kids it's mm -hmm. <laughs> i have to constantly teach my two daughters that it's okay to not get a mark that's higher or lower than specific people within their classroom. Yeah. I have to teach that it's okay if you don't win a race. I have to teach them that it's okay if you don't have certain things that other kids have or that you have certain things. And if you're in a position to, to, to have extra for that person, you've got it. You can share with them as well because mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so... It's so important for us to also, as much as what we learn, to try and teach our kids. As much as I know when they reach my age, they're going to learn a lot of other things. But yes. if I try and instill a better foundation and a foundation that can still be poured more into. Yes. Yes. You know? <laughs> that's, why, that's why it's very important um, early on for in childhood to build a lot of this stuff. Because what happens is, Again, I keep using the building example, but even for a car or anything that you're making, like initially when you're coming up with a plan to create something, you're not only thinking about, oh, it's, uh, oh, this is going to look nice and it's going to feel nice is no, you're going, you're thinking about, okay, how long, what's the longevity of this product? How long can this sustain someone or help prepare someone i mean that's why you have certain buildings like very um monuments as well as just historical buildings that are being restored right now is because yes they were built to last for like long periods of time but i mean over time you always got to go back and you have to go back and do that renovating and that restoring mm -hmm. but the initial foundation that was set and all the core concepts and and love, time, and attention that was put into it really helped it to continue to thrive and wherever it is. So when it comes to children, it's very important because at an early age, children are very malleable. Their minds are just learning and growing and growing. There's a process. And again, this is, you know, you can say psychology and all the whole Eric Erickson's bicycle, social, all that, all that whole other stuff that, you know, is like it could be taught somewhere else. But just the whole concept of the idea of pruning for kids after between the ages um, of one to five is where a lot of the kids, especially if you want them to learn another language, want them to learn um, very key things. You definitely want to be able to, of course, not overload, but 
be able to give it to them at that early age because after six, a lot of things were a lot of concepts that didn't make connections or neural pathways in the mind begin to um break off. And for that mm. to be to even work into the future, they would have to constantly go back and do that. That's what I like to call muscle memory. And if you don't keep, you know, teaching the kid a certain concept or a certain, you know, rule or a certain way to address and do things um, and, uh, and talk to people, they're not going to know. They're going to learn by experiences and, and you can you can set them up for failure by not knowing how to do this stuff and they'll get frustrated. Yeah. They'll learn other ways to cope with it versus mm -hmm. the ways that you could show them how to properly address these things. And again, of course, there's going to be so many certain situations that you're not going to be able to prep your you know children for that it's going to happen on that instance but the great mm -hmm. way when it comes to that parenting or just the way of just guiding someone is that when that situation happens shoot, you go back and evaluate with them you let them know okay yeah. how did you feel in that moment you know mm -hmm. what really made you do this or why did you feel sad about this and then you let them and you give them a talk see the more that we because we say it look it we don't just say things in English or in just languages just to say things, these wise sayings. They actually mean stuff. So when we keep saying communication is key, I mean, goodness, it is key. Like, you need yep. to communicate <clears throat> with people and to get your points across to folks and for them to understand your reasonings, not just your debates and trying to argue, but your reason for why you're sharing something with them through experience or even through logic, et cetera it helps them to be like, oh, okay, now that situation makes sense to me. Mommy, now I know what to do when someone comes and they start talking bad about me. Dad, I know what to do when the teacher keeps telling me that I talk too much or anything and stuff of that <laughs> nature. It's just really, you just take that step back and you, you talk it out. And well, for folks who are not able to talk it out, there's various other ways to do so. I mean, you have the whole idea of play. Maybe through play, that's another way people learn, you know, through the experiences. I know I had to do that. Yeah. Speaking of you working with youth, like, I've done that in the past, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now, I'm not able to. But some yeah. some children, they learn through play. So, like, I had to go through scenarios with them. Like, we literally talking about I, – I literally – I get an example. I was working, I was working with um, one student, and he was having an issue of, uh, you know, connecting with other kids. And what would happen is because this student actually also was on the spectrum, but was very, very intelligent, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. It's just very hard to have those type of, you know, those social skills and cues. But we would go through different um, scenarios of like when they're outside playing and like what happens when someone like either takes a ball or you they start saying something that might get under your skin is like, how do you address it? And we did it a few times with the student and the thing is it sometimes it got to the point where it was so real that like the student will like shut down for a quick second and is like don't know what to do and then I tell yeah. them like you know this is all just for play but then we go back and we talk about or like do that play they was like okay so I see like yeah if I keep on trying to respond back to everything that they're saying about me it's going to get to a point where I'm not going to have anything else to say and now I'm going to feel like I look stupid or I yeah. look like I don't know what to do anymore. And then other people are going to start laughing at me. It's going to become a bigger issue. But again, that communication, whether it's, you know, through play, through experience, through talking, go ahead. Okay. You see that, that whole concept, like retraining that small little thing. And this is why I love, like I worked, you guys call it kindergarten, kindergarten. I would call them daycare. So I worked with kids from the ages of three to six. Mm. So I love working with that age group because I feel like they're more teachable at that phase, yes. <laughs> you know, um, and, and what we, we, the concept that we were taught when we were studying was kids learn through play. So they say within our textbooks, like teachers shouldn't just be sitting and having their cup of coffee on the playground. They need to interact with kids even during lunch breaks. It's in our textbook. <laughs> it's in the textbook. So I loved that and I was like, ooh, okay, no, nah, I wish more people could see this. Yes. Because at those moments of where there's no structured learning per se, where the real learning starts. Yeah. 
when they're outside playing, kicking a ball or on the swing. And I love that you you had to help him relearn something. As much as it might seem very small to some, it's yeah. something that leads up to a much bigger thing. Because if he had to continue dealing with people in that specific way, and it's something that I also teach my girls that if you're going to de- deal with people in a violent way, because I have two girls, girls, yeah. Like I was not ready. I didn't grow up with little sisters. <laughs> I grew up with a big brother, so the communication was always like, "Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Cool." And then <laughs> that was it. And now yes. I've got these girls that want to fight sometimes out of no nowhere. I'm like, okay, this is not how we communicate. This is how we communicate. And the fact that you had to teach him that it works down to a lot, a much further thing. Because I say to them that if you're not gonna communicate with her like this. When you go down the line, if somebody dis- you feel somebody's disrespected you in a certain way, you yes. can deal with them with violence. And you know that the the system in which we live in does not take lightly to violence. And they're like, "What do you mean?" So it opens the door to another conversation. Okay, do you know if you smack someone, someone can go to the police station and lay a charge against you, and yeah. then you have a criminal record. Yep. So. <laughs> We now have these conversations and they think before they react. And yes. as little, little kids, they have, we have the, I wish, like one day, I wish I could just record them when we have these conversations because yes. they have such a broader mindset to certain topics as to like, oh, okay, the one day we talk, spoke about um, working for something compared to being handed something and what mm-hmm. the reward is. Not just on the physical, but that feeling of satisfaction. So we yes. had a, like a on our five minute walk from school to home. We had a whole talk about that, and I'm telling an eight year old and a six year old about how it feels to be, <laughs> to work for something and the satisfaction you get from working for something compared to getting handed that same thing. For example, yes. use a car. So. Um, um, a Mustang drove past them. So they were like, ooh, this car sounds so nice and it looks so beautiful. And they're like, oh, I wish I could, somebody could, I wish daddy could give me this car. So I'm like, but don't you think it would be better for you to work for it and or, or daddy giving you and then mm-hmm. you just go and crashing it? And they, they looked at me and they're like, what do you mean? So that's how we opened up the door for that specific conversation. Yes. And, and it also comes to that thing of, you can talk about anything. Mm-hmm. It's how you approach a topic, firstly, yeah. and introduce that topic with subtlety. And yes. I think the fact that when you work with kids, it's so much, it's not easier, but it gets you to a point where, like, I had to, I had a kid, and she had, um, her parents were separated, mm. and it was a whole long story situation and she had to go live with her dad because her mom wasn't around and separation anxiety and she had a lot of um things emotionally that were, were happening but separation anxiety was the biggest one yes because what about love and attention from someone she'd hold on to it and she'd get mad if anyone tried to pull her away from that person mm. and i saw it happen with her dad the first day she came and I was like, no, don't worry. He's like, Kim, is this normal? Is this normal? Imagine now, like, him as a parent, he didn't understand <laughs> if this was normal or not. Yes. <laughs> is this normal? Because of the foundation that she had been instilled with when she lived with her mom. Mm. So wow. now she's moved with her dad, and her dad is trying to teach her that there's love here. I'm not running away. I'm not leaving you. I've always been here. Um, yeah, you are free to, to have friends. You here to you free to play. You don't have to always have me in sight. And it was sad because once the day was done and she was she got calm afterwards and um she had to when it was time to leave, she cried because she didn't want to leave me. Mm. And her dad says, But really, Kim, this is frustrating and I said to him, You just have to be patient. And the same thing with us. We have to also be patient with ourselves. Yes. You know, and... Patience. Exactly. It's it's a lot of patience because there's a lot of things that you're going to come across in life, whether it be even in the job world, there's a lot of jobs that you're not going to have, you're not going to have the patience to do. Yes. Very true. <laughs> you know, 
job has its dirty work. Every job has has um you can't just look at the amount of money you're going to get and be like, "Yay! That's what I'm doing what I'm doing." But you have to have um the patience for it and also reassure yourself that why you're actually doing what you're doing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for those examples. That was definitely beautiful. Um Yeah, we we going in and I definitely want to make sure I um I take time for um and also if Kunden had anything else and I'm going to definitely do it after show so y'all still more than welcome to come back in um and to join but I want I want to at least wrap up this conversation and get to basically um ending off the show for tonight so um both of you to again appreciate y'all so much um your time and support and your thoughts and your sharing of course if i'm gonna do this every time y'all so people out there watching be like stop doing this i'm gonna do this every single time because i know how important time and people support it so i'm gonna say every single time that i gotta say so if you get mad go check the other channels you can go over there um but (laughs) before before we wrap up we're talking about um how to build a firm foundation of yourself in the show um did you um can you too one last few points um, before we end. Um, Kunin, I want to definitely go with you because we probably heard some stuff from, from both of us and I want to see if you had some and if not, what is your um, wrap up? Yeah, I definitely agree with the, the, the self-awareness and self-discovery uh, as I you know, also mentioned last week, you know, I want to reemphasize the point that, you know, there's it is really key to building your firm, a firm foundation because if you if you build a foundation based on what you think you want, but you don't even know who is the I that is wanting it, like yes. who or what is the I that is wanting it, uh, and and B where these desires actually come from, like you think you know the the advice is follow your heart but like you think that heart is truly you and your desire but it could mm. have been just implanted by you know media religion society corporation school etc and not really yours mm. right yes so i want to reemphasize what yuva noah harari has said over and over again that you know, know thyself is the oldest advice in the book. Like it's been around thousands of years old. Yes. But we never had any competition, which means that we used to have all the time in the world to know yourself. But now we're running out of time because we finally have competition for the first time in the history of the human species. Mm. And that competition is artificial intelligence. Oh, combined yeah. with biotechnology and biometric sensors, uh, even tracking our eye movements and things like that. And, you know, one of the most uh, powerful examples he gives is uh, Harari didn't know something very big and very important about himself until he was 21. He didn't mm. know that he was gay, right? Which you would think he, well, he might have known by 16 or 17 but it was hidden even from himself, right? Because of all of that oppression, right? The systemic mm. conditioning that's uh, homophobic, anti-gay, etc., right? And, but supposing, you know, at, at that time, uh, we already had this technology that could track his eye movement combined with machine learning, right? And data computing, you know, massive computing with artificial intelligence. Yes. And they would show him, you know, pictures of women or boys versus girls and he was 16 or 17. And if his eye movements would move more towards boys, right, when he looks at his phone, then they would deduce correctly that he was gay. Yeah. And then Coca-Cola would send him a very highly customized ad instead of, you know, sending him pictures of sexy women, it would send him pictures of shirtless young boys, right? With huge biceps, right? And and then one day he would be at a grocery store and between the choice between Coca-Cola and Pepsi, without even 
knowing why he would choose Coca-Cola, and he would think it's his choice, that it's his free will, never realizing it was a subliminal program yep, 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 that yep. was already implanted in him. And yep. that's why he always says that free will is an illusion, that the most easily manipulated people on earth are those who think they have free will, especially in this day and age. Mm. And that's why you got to know yourself, because it's now a race against time. And that's part of how you truly build a firm foundation. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I appreciate you revisiting that example, too, for, for folks who probably haven't seen it as well, too. So thank you for that, Kundin. Mm -hmm. um, Kimberly, what you got? <laughs> Um, again, as you, as you already said, we're, we're on a race against time. And if you at a point where you've learned a lot, we, there's no one in this world that knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, we don't all know everything. I feel like some lessons, um, that you have, I'm still going to have to learn. And the fact that you have some knowledge, some wisdom on certain topics, I feel like you should be sharing it with me because I know I'm going to share it with you. Knowledge yeah. and wisdom are free. <laughs> you know, it's, it's free. It was free before we even existed. Yes. And the fact that we can pass these things down and the fact that you've gained and learned certain things, you should pass it down because you never know who's going to learn and pick up from that specific um, lesson that you learned within your life. So yeah, that's that's my whole my point is try and teach someone or give them some knowledge and wisdom on certain things before the, your time is over. Mm. Because Beautiful. Because such to have left this earth and not have shared just a little bit of yourself. It's just a little drop, just a little bit. So at least even if you're sharing it with two people, even if you're sharing it with three people, it's fine. Just share a little bit of yourself. That's very true. Wow. Yes. Um, and to wrap up with all this, again, I appreciate you too so much. Appreciate everybody's coming in. Unfortunately for y'all coming in, man, y'all missed out already on so much of the show, but it is all good and well. Um, but to wrap up for tonight's show, when it comes to current events, y'all, please be willing to take the time to look what's going on in the news because any way that you can inform yourself is a better way to not only prepare yourself but other people and those around you so we can know what's going on and what to do so we can plan and build that firm foundation now when it comes to the laws of nature in this aspect we talked about the hermetic principles if you don't know those hermetic principles we have them here again the concepts of mentalism which will be oneness if you want to think of that Principle of correspondence, principle of vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. And all of that together basically to at least give you a firm foundation of how these concepts and these laws and principles play a part into your life. Um, either way through media, through wise sayings, and just the way that you interact with things in your life. So always make sure to just keep that in mind if you can. Lastly, when it comes to building a firm foundation, I agree with both of your sentiments. And the main thing I will say is learn what steps that you need to build your foundation, your house, your business, and your plot or goal in your life. For me, my example, honestly, is my saying, which I say, keep your pace. And basically, PACE stands for patience, awareness, consistency, and empathy. And for me, that is my foundation, my firm foundation that helps me to build and continue to grow and learn beyond in this world and my own experiences that I have day to day. So that's my foundation. Whether you can have your patience, whether you have the openness, whether you can have the awareness, whether you can have the evaluation of looking back and finding things out for yourself, find what works for you. Find what concepts, find the people, find your resources, put that all together and don't be afraid to reevaluate because at the end of the day, too, you got to give yourself some grace and you got to love on yourself. But with that, y'all, this has been another episode of What's the Word Wednesdays, season two, episode 31. Again, 
Thanks to Kimberly. Thanks to Kunda for coming on again and sharing. Shout out to those who are here, as well as those who are going to be watching this later on Instagram and YouTube. If you're on YouTube, follow your boy at Avis Speaks. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more because we got more videos coming, and it's going to be happening. I'm ready. So you got to be ready to be there with me. But other than that, y'all, we'll catch y'all next Wednesday. Appreciate your time and your support once again. Other than that, peace and love. And we're out. Wow.